It's time for Twig This Week in Google. Jeff Jarvis has the week off, but we're joined by Twitter cartoonist, the first engineer fired by Elon Musk and the creator of this legendary comic about the organizational structure of the big six tech companies. Manu Cornett is our guest. Stacy and Ant are here, too. Lots to talk about. Stay here. This Week in Google is next. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. Twit. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 694, recorded Wednesday, December 14th, 2022. The Fifty Shades of Stacy. This Week in Google is brought to you by HPE GreenLake, orchestrated by the experts at CDW, who can help you consolidate and manage all your data in one flexible edge-to-cloud platform to scale and innovate. Learn more at cdw.com slash HPE. And by... Tanium. Tanium unites operations and security teams with a single platform that identifies where all your IT data is, patches every device you own in seconds, and implements critical security controls all from a single pane of glass. Are you ready to protect your organization from cyber threats? Learn more at tanium.com slash twit. And by Cashfly. Cashfly is the only CDN built for throughput delivering rich media content up to 10 times faster than traditional delivery methods and 30% faster than other major CDNs. Learn how you can get your first month free at cashfly.com. It's time for Twig This Week in Google, which is going to be mostly entirely about Twitter. But uh, pay no attention to that. Uh, there will be some Google in This Week in Google. Stacy Higginbotham is here. Hello, Stacy. I'll make sure there's some Google news. Hello. We'll stick some IoT in, too. Why not? Stacy on IOT.com is her website. Podcast, the IOT podcast with Kevin Toffel. And it's so wonderful to have you here. It is wonderful to be here. You know who's not here? Jeff Jarvis oh. is not here. But we have a very fine replacement who I will introduce momentarily. But first, let's say hello to Aunt Pruitt, hands on photography, our community manager in the fabulous Twit Discord, Club Twit leader. It's wonderful to have you here as well. Thank you, sir. And again, I am glad to give Mr. Jarvis some crap for, you know, always talking about how he's here all the time, but he's not here this week. That's okay, Mr. Jarvis. <laughs> we see you. It is, it is, he's hardly ever absent. He was in, the, when we used to do the show in Just the early brag, days. brag, brag, brag. used to go to Davos <laughs> and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Travel, remember that? And suddenly, he, he would be on it like he's like, yeah, it's one in the morning here. I'm like, man, <laughs> go to bed. <laughs> hey, I am very excited to uh, welcome our guest today. Now, 10 years ago, uh, I was sent this cartoon, a cartoon that we have referred to many times. Everybody in the tech industry has referred to many times. Let me give you a, a close up shot of it because y the details uh, matter. This is by a, a cartoonist who at the time was working at Google named Manu Cornet, or Cornet is how he is how he likes it. These are the the org charts for Amazon, nice traditional org chart, hierarchical. Jeff Bezos at the top. He was at Google. <laughs> Google's a little bit messy. Uh, Facebook, Social Graph, Apple, all centered around one red dot. Steve Jobs at the time, this is 2012. Actually, no, Jobs had already passed. So it's Tim Cook officially. Uh, Oracle, which is mostly legal and a little bit of engineering. <laughs> but the one that we always talk about is Microsoft. And this really was the case at Microsoft for a long time, where independent divisions of Microsoft would, sh would shoot at each other. <laughs> and so they each have handguns. <laughs> and and nobody, you know, the Windows team hated the, uh, the Word team, and the Word team hated, the, you know, it was one of those, the cloud team. Anyway, this is a classic, really a classic. And you see a man who autographed it for Leo Laporte and everyone at Twit and Drew a little Manu in the corner. We're we're thrilled to have Manu Cornet uh, on the show with us Thank you. today. Hi, Hi Manu. Yes. Hello. A so I, actually, I think I drew this Ooh. in 2011. So Steve Jobs was right still alive. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. couple months before. So, um, and I I was an engineer at Google for 15 years. So just by virtue of me being on the show, you have your Google excuse. Oh, you you're right. Boom. Boom. Done. Handled it right there. Done. done. <laughs> Job done. You can, you can skip the change log now. <laughs> Wait, this is a good chance for audience research. Yay or nay on the change log. 
Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I'm not sure I want to open that poll. That's an Elon kind of thing. I, I'm oh, I see. Of, I'm afraid of the bots. I, uh, I don't. So we were talking about Manu, <laughs> yes, uh, last week, and I guess that's that's what precipitated his appearance here. We knew uh, Jeff would be out, and I thought, well, let's get Manu on. He was uh, the first person fired from Twitter, aside from the C level executives like the CEO and the 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 head uh, legal counsel. He was one of the first people, if not the first people, person to be fired at Twitter. The Economist had a great uh, story, which I referred to last week. I thought I'd been hacked. It turned out I'd been fired. Um, Manu, first of all, let me let me ask you. Uh, here you are now, a couple of weeks after. How do you feel these days about what's going on at Twitter? <clears throat> um. Well, personally, I'm doing great. What's going on at Twitter? I don't know. I'm a bit concerned about the uh, the political changes, the all the changes in in moderation. Many people are concerned about the technical side. Are whoever is left are they going to be um, able to hold the fort? I think I have maybe less of a concern for this, but it seems like advertisers are leaving. I don't think Elon Musk is ready to pump more cash into this because he's already pumped a lot of so i think he's going to be faced with a difficult choice if it doesn't really fly is he gonna um uh lose face by really ending the whole thing or is he gonna be able to um manage i'm not sure he's already lost a little bit of face you heard about him oh dave, yeah dave Chappelle bringing him up on stage <laughs> Uh, at, in San Francisco during his show uh, a couple of days ago, and Elon was. Now he says he was both. It was mixed, cheered and booed, and I did hear some cheers, but primarily booed for about ten minutes. Uh, his, his tweet said something like, "To be fair, it was ninety percent cheers and ten yeah, percent booze." That's no. his his usual way of trying to spin the right. Things. Yeah, no, uh, Manu. I should have started with this. How are you doing personally? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm one of the lucky ones, really. I don't have uh, I don't have visa issues. Uh, some people have, and some of them have remained at Twitter just because of that reason, because they they are an, on an H one B visa, for example, and they would not be able to find another job immediately. Um, so they stick around. I don't have any um, uh, health coverage issue. Um, so I'm, I'm really pretty lucky. I, so I guess I have two sides. My, my human and engineer side is a bit, um, upset about how this whole, this whole thing was conducted. Um, my cartoonist side is having lots of fun drawing <laughs> almost every day something about whatever new stupid things that, uh, he's inventing every single day. You have, uh, in fact, I imagine this was one of the reasons you were fired. You have a whole selection of what you call twit tunes uh, that you have drawn uh, over the time. The first one was this. This was before uh, Elon came along, even right. Yeah, yeah. Initially, it was uh, so. I did this at Google as well for almost fifteen years, um, and to their credit, they never fired me for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> even though some of them were pretty critical. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, most companies you're allowed to uh, politely dissent. <laughs> um, well, what what is allowed? Define allowed. I mean, you could be allowed and still be fired, but then <laughs> right. Right. Did they ever tell you why you were fired? Not really. So it seems like the most obvious reason is because I I published a little uh, Chrome extension, a little tool to help people um, automate a tiny part of getting some of their email out. So stuff that would be valuable for future employment, things like performance reviews or good words from colleagues, anything that is stuck in your work email that you would lose access if you um, get fired or if you resign. <clears throat> and I was, I published a link to that Chrome extension, which really only automated like two or three clicks. And I was fired about an hour, actually an hour and five minutes later. Yeah. Mm. I could see Elon seeing that and hitting the fan mm. uh, or hitting something. <laughs> I, I can understand that. What is, what was your job at Twitter? What did you do? Uh, engineer, I was working on the the web application, front end. Yes, and uh, in fact, you uh, you described this in the story uh, before your firing, or 
doing the 24 hour long shifts trying to get that blue check out in time he said it has to be done by friday and uh and your your colleagues were working on it and you it's, you said you pitched in yeah yeah it was there was some <clears throat> excuse me there was some dimension of uh calling people by name and saying you're responsible for this if you don't get it done by this date which would be maybe more like a Monday and this would be on set on a Friday. So it was never really explicitly said that you had to work over the weekend, but there was no other way of, of making it happen. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I liked those, those colleagues whose names were on the, uh, on the shopping board, really. Um, I didn't have to pitch in, but I was, I was glad to. Yeah. Uh, you talked before the show started about, uh, the, the collegial feeling at Twitter. Twitter, it, and I have to say, even just looking at the auction of all the the, the Twitter office furniture that uh, Elon's auctioning off and the kitchen supplies that he's auctioning off, it looked like a not a bad place to work. It was a great place to work, yes. Uh, I think I wanted to do a cartoon about this, about maybe one of the items being sold on eBay or whatever is would be the, the company ethics that's also being sold. <laughs> that mm. one's going cheap. Mm. <laughs> well, it might be free. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody wants it, come and get it. But you, you've got to come and get it, yeah. Um, but but yeah, it's uh, it's sometimes it's odd to file lawsuits and, and complain and maybe unionize even because... You might come across as spoiled brats who are already so spoiled with yeah, everything. Yeah, I think that's the risk is that people look at uh, uh, people, uh, engineers in Silicon Valley and say, for crying out loud, they feed you, they do your dry cleaning, you, you, yeah. you get a, you know, a leather clad bus to take you uh, to the office. What are you complaining about? Exactly. Yeah. So that's why maybe the flip side of it is that if they don't want to anymore, then they can fire pretty unceremoniously. But but then you can find another gig. And also, even in today's climate, it's not so difficult. Stacey and Ant, please don't let me. Uh, I will oh, sure. you let me monopolize the conversation. Well, well, I do have a question for him. Um, he, he mentions you mentioned your technical concerns for, for Twitter, you know, now that you're gone, what in particular, I mean, you're, you're a front end person are your concerns more along the lines of, uh, reliability of it staying up or is it deeper like content moderation or, or legal concerns and that right. type of thing? I, I think there's two different things. The, the content moderation that is clearly already going down. There's, I, I saw some, um, posts of people posting and full length Hollywood movies in 10 right. minute increments in threads. And right. those, you know, usually you, you want to automate as much as you, as you can, but sometimes you do need humans to uh, go through some of this. So mm -hmm. this is de clearly already degraded a lot, not to mention all the hate speech and the political stuff. Um, I'm not that concerned as, as um, uh, keeping things afloat. Uh, there's much fewer people, but I think there's still good people. I don't really hope for Twitter to go down. I have really no, I'm not mm -hmm. bitter or anything. I, I hope that it succeeds. I, I still like the platform. Um, but it is true that you're st starting to see some glitches here and there. Um, and there's just a lot of knowledge because when you fire so many people and the half of the rest is also gone just by by virtue of not being thrilled with what happened you just lose a lot of knowledge about how things work so um I'm, i don't know how it's going to be transferred is it a safe speculation to say you know one of these days the twitter api is just going to be gone you we can't have people just accessing it willy-nilly and doing whatever they want from a third-party standpoint and Twitter's just going to lock it down and further make it more proprietary and, and the only way you're in there is if you pay. Right. Um, I actually don't know what is currently possible with the API. Isn't it already encouraged that you would do something, even if you're linking to a tweet, you would be encouraged to post some kind of a... It's an embed. Yeah. You, an embed. embed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are third-party apps, but the, the API, as you remember, you weren't there, but as you remember, they went through a period of openness, down. Which, then they cracked down when, the, when Bill Gross's company uh, started to acquire Twitter <laughs> clients. Mm. They said, well, maybe we don't think this is such a good idea. Um, mm. What did you do at Google? Oh, uh, so I was at Google for such a long time, basically forever until, yeah, so almost 15 years. Um, I worked on Gmail, 
and Inbox for about eight years. I worked on Android. I worked sad on... about Inbox. I really liked Inbox. Yeah, some people really liked it. It had a small user base yeah. in Google's terms. I think any startup would be would be happy right. to have that user oh, base. Oh, you only had 100 million users. Oh, come <laughs> on, man. It's barely but, worth doing anything. <laughs> It was pitched as the next Gmail, so there's right. you know, big, big shoes to fill, which it didn't really fill. Right. Um, so Inbox and then Android, and I worked on Chrome and Chrome OS for a while as well, and I worked on Search. Uh, yeah, so I spent a long time there. I spent a, a bit on there. On, on Are you going to go back to work for a company, or do you want to freelance, or you just want to be a cartoonist for, for a while? Great question. I'm I'm lucky so far that I don't have a huge financial pressure because I've I've you know I'm a saver and I've been in the industry for a long time. So I'm I'm gonna do some cartooning for a bit, but um I'm absolutely terrible at selling my stuff. I just like to give everything away for free with I hate paywalls, I hate um yeah. Well, at least ads across my cartoons. I think your ads are fine because you hand pick them. Um but but uh, yeah, I just want to give everything away for free, which makes n no money, obviously. But as, as a creator, it sounds like you need an agent, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think Madden wants one. I think are like, you uh, <laughs> or are you volunteering? <laughs> no, I'm not volunteering. I don't want that work. Woo. <laughs> I'm just thinking about where people will go now, because like. I don't know if y'all remember, but way back in the day when Tumblr was a thing, you'd see like people get book deals off of Tumblr. And then you mm -hmm. saw like people get book and calendar deals from Twitter right. and even Instagram maybe. So I don't know where people go for that now to like find the kind of fun, cute, cute touches creators. Oh, was, <laughs> for those who are not watching, Stacy has the that cutest the sneeze you ever seen. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're really like, missing oh, no, out coming. on audio. It didn't sound nearly as good as it looked. Four, uh, what, like a four <laughs> month old? What was that? <laughs> when I when I sneeze, it's like chorus. If I sneeze, it's like rah, and this is like <laughs> very cute, okay. very adorable. Uh, I'm looking. <laughs> What were you saying? I forgot now. <laughs> I knocked it right out of my head. She was wondering where creators go. I think there's a, there's Patreon, there's a yeah. Kickstarter, there's some yeah. platforms. Yeah. It's a bit different, okay. but yeah. there's some well, stuff. Yeah, you should definitely start a Patreon. That's easy. Or you yeah. could even do like, is it coffee? Where buy you just coffee. like, yeah, buy, buy me, me a coffee. coffee. Yeah, that's not going to pay know, your bills. If, if you want to go back and look at his uh, Google comics, it's Gumix, G O O M I C S dot net. And they're great too, but you know, it is interesting. You don't pull punches. Um, so uh, it's kind of it's kind of fun that, that they let you do this. Did you ever get any heat for? I did a little bit, not not quite so much that I would get fired. And it's hard for these if you don't have the context. It's a bit right. hard to understand. So I made that's why this is the only way that I make that I allow people to pay for my stuff is I, I have some books and then I have all the context around it. This was after the James Demore thing, the right. hundred por portraits of right. uh, women in tech. That was my sort of attempt at doing a positive reply to I the, like the sexist. Yeah, no, I really um, like it. Yeah. But the issue is that if, if I make a book and then the whole purpose of the book is to have text around the cartoons explaining the context, you know, if, if you have to explain it for 30 minutes, it's no longer funny. So right. It's, right. it's, it's not, not easy. You have to know the context to see why this is. Even. I kind of, of course we, we cover Google and we've been doing it for years. So maybe uh, I'm a little more privy to what's going on inside, but I kind of like also the puzzle part of it. of like, Oh, what, what are these talking about? Full lyrics for official promo <laughs> anthem launch and run and brag. <laughs> and then, so you have to think, well, was that really the anthem or is it just what it sounded like or it's fun. Mm. I love it. I think it's really uh, an, uh, worth preserving as an archive of history, told in that, a unique. That way. last one. That last one was a uh, was a. Uh trying to poke fun at the way people get promoted. Right. This is not just about Google, but very often you have to you have to say, hey, this is what I launched. Look, it's big and new and shiny and looking great. And then I'm, I'm off to something else. I'm not doing any of the maintenance. And it may, right. this thing may have been built in a terrible well, way. But you can give us some insight because this is kind of, you know, everybody from the outside doesn't really know what's going on inside a company. But from the outside, it looks exactly like that, that the incentives uh, at, tw at Google are 
to create something new, but much less to maintain it or keep it running. And, and some people have even said that's the problem with Google is they're always trying to do the next new thing and never putting any effort into the old thing. Is that accurate? And, and that's why they kill so many things. Right. I think they're, they're trying to, uh, at least on paper, incentivize um, people who are also more into grunge work and maintenance and cleaning things up to make them more. And there are uh, people like that. You yeah, shouldn't call it grunge like work. You could call it erasing technical debt. Paying yeah, down technical debt. Yeah. Those sexy can, maintenance There's some people engineers. who love that, who get code, get a code base and love to dig into it and figure out, you know, what it's doing and how to make it better. There's certainly people yeah. who love that. Not everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I personally like that very much. I um, And yeah, I think, Stacey, you should, uh, speaking of volunteering, you should want you to write the copy for the promo package. <laughs> there, there you go. I'll help you for it. I'll, I'll do that. Uh, so much. I am also terrible enough. at selling myself, but I'll okay. sell you in a heartbeat. You can sell other people. Yeah. Yeah. What's funny <laughs> is I think you, you and me, Stacey, are terrible at it. Aunt and Jeff are really good at it. <laughs> and so it's a I good wish balance. I was better. Well, you, you're pretty good at getting the create and dominate out there. I think you do a good job <laughs> yeah. of promoting it. And so, Twitter. So, Leo, so. Yeah. do you need to have a team of people around you saying, hey, you should make people pay for this? Or I do. That's what, that's honestly. That's Aunt's it is, job. That is, that is, you know, that we have a huge. Got a staff. That's the team. <laughs> Part, there's some of the team is, you know, editing and doing content creation. But that's only, that's probably less than half. Half All the right. team is marketing, advertising, sales, yep. copywriting, continuity. You have to do all, all of right. that. And yeah. I let's, never uh, wanted to do it, so I hired people the, to do it. You know? yeah. Let's keep the call on after this, so I'm going to approach some people. Good. You could steal some of my people. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, let, uh, and again, Stacey and Ant, don't hesitate to, to sure. jump in on this, because I, I will dominate. Well, I, so I have a question because I'm, I'm unlike many still on Twitter. I've, I've noticed myself checking it less. There's definitely less, less of the type of content that I like to see, which was like super nerdy debates about things or cool things that people were building. Um, but there's still a little of that and there's still people talking to me and I'm still getting lots of new followers. And so far only one of them has been a jerk. So that, that's good. Um, what You're are your, you. What is your take on Twitter now? And like, what? You said you love it. Why should it, right? people be using it? Do you still love it? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I I still like the platform. I don't really like what is currently happening. It's only been a month or so. I think it's almost unprecedented how much of the company culture has changed within a month of an acquisition, but it's not, yeah, it's not even an acquisition. It's more like a takeover. Um, I, I do see more, um, I do see more hate speech people who are, um, in, in line with Elon Musk's views are more, uh, emboldened. So there's some, yeah, but I, so one thing I really like about the platform that happened recently is this thing called Birdwatch, which was mm -hmm. a way for the community to moderate itself by calling out people on their lives, for example. Um, and that was something, I think that was a great answer to the, the dilemma of should we censor people or not when they say false things. Um, and the, it seems like a good middle ground to me where, you don't censor, but you, you add a note be, be below it. And that's um, only appears if a certain number of people do it and if they agree and, and there's some safeguards. But it, but you give people context to maybe find out why this is a lie. So that's one thing that I'm concerned about is that I think Musk's tweets were uh, targeted by this at some point. So as we know from his history, if something disagrees with him, he's probably going to try and kill it. So I wonder if this is going to survive. I think he renamed it from Birdwatch. And he called it Notes. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, something like this. Um, and I think uh, Jack Dorsey said this was the most boring name ever. But yeah, <laughs> everything. Jack everything has changed his tune a little bit. Jack was all in on... Elon, he thought he'd really transform the place. And I think he's got to feel a little bit watching it burn to the ground. He's got to feel a little bit like, what are you doing to my baby here? So let me put, so the, one of the latest cartoons that I posted, I posted a link in the discord chat was, I think that was 
you really need to get the context, but it was the, the scene of uh, Star Wars where the Emperor is Musk and Jack is the Darth Vader in the back and watching it happen. Oh, so there's I recognize him from the beard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So th this, you know, I think it's it's actually harder to be a cartoonist than to be an engineer because you mess up one little thing. Like that beard wasn't quite uh, obvious enough. People did, didn't see it and they just scan through things. I was hoping people would, would see it, but then they didn't and they might not. So you, know, you can mess up your joke by just one tiny detail. It looks like something. maybe Darth Vader's got a kind of hairy chest. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, he's got his... <laughs> But I, I think when, as soon as you said it's Jack Dorsey, then I know, oh, yeah, that's the beard. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you do Elon dark. quite well, although I'm sure Elon's not totally flattered by how you do Elon. <laughs> Elon well, is... Well, what is he going to do, fire me again? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I have to say, man, you're a nice guy, and you're not uh, bitter. You don't sound anyway, and I don't think you are bitter about this, and I don't think it's changed your attitude towards Twitter, obviously not, certainly not towards your former colleagues. When Elon first said, I want to buy Twitter back in last spring, were you, at the time, did you think this could be a good thing? Um, I think, like many people, we were willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, That's good to hear. And, yeah, I think, I mean, to be fair, I think th there were needed... We had to have layoffs. Twitter had to have layoffs at some point. Um, it was probably... Uh, it has grown too fast. It's not. It was a company that was trying to play nice. Uh, I think the one way Stacy put it a few shows ago it was trying to be a good neighbor. Or was it Stacy? I forgot. Um, but it was it was trying to be good on the on the the political realm and and the free speech part, but without um, too much hate speech. And it was trying to be nice to its employees and to its users. It was not perfect, but it was trying to be a nice company. And, and for that, also not being too aggressive with ads, um, it, it was not very profitable. So it became right. an easy target. Um, still had to be profitable. Yeah. So, and, and I, I, I appreciate the fact that you can say that it seems like people were, were a bit open-minded about it because, According to most of the press that I read, as soon as the, the news came out, everybody was like, oh, my gosh, that's the worst idea ever is for him to come in and, and be, uh, acquire this company without even giving him a shot. Now, granted, it is turning into a bit of a crap show more and more each day, but you still got to give the give the person a shot because we don't know what he might have had up his sleeve that could have been profitable and beneficial beneficial for the company. Well, if you don't, I mean, I didn't know him very well. Uh, if you don't know that much about the the, the backstory and all the the little uh, the, all the ways he behaves, you think, hey, this is a guy who is uh, building uh, rocket mm -hmm. ships and uh, electric cars, and he seems like a cool dude. I mean, in some way, um, I also like that he is. Um, I'm gonna get lots of crap for saying good things about Mr. Musk, but I, I no, like I that. I do too. Trust me, you'll, you'll be <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I, I like that she doesn't take himself too seriously. Uh, that's something as a as my cartoonist side resonates with them. I, you know, if he arrives to the uh, offices with a sink just to make a, f a stupid pun, uh, whoever is going to get fired that day may not find it so funny. Right. But I quite right. like that that eccentric part. But then the more I learned about him, the less I liked it, uh, mm -hmm. and the more the more benefits and doubts there was in my mind for, for him. And there's really none left at this point. Uh, when did it start to turn? Um, it was, there was so much of a roller coaster for the whole period. Because you talked in, in The Economist article about how distracting it was when all of this was going back and forth before he actually made the acquisition. Yeah, it was very distracting. It was not only distracting because it's if you're working for a company and your company is um, is being acquired, and I'm I'm posting another cartoon, in the, um, <clears throat> but also it's a company that is extremely um, always in the spotlight because journalists use it a lot, so they cover it more. And uh, this is what we were told to ju just tune out the noise, but it's hard when, you know, you, <laughs> you got jet airplanes going over <laughs> fireworks, a meta blimp, a helicopter. You've got people saying free speech, go Parag. Oh, Love you, dude. Jack, Elon forever. Cheers. And then you're just sitting there head down coding. 
Yeah, exactly. Good luck. So good luck. not easy. Yeah. yeah. And and he was also changing his mind every other day about whether he wanted to be on the board, whether he wanted to buy the company or not buy the company. And then Twitter trying to sue him. Uh, would he win the, the suits or not? And then so after a while, it was just such a bad Netflix show with a, a cliff <laughs> cliffhanger at the end of each episode. So in, at the start, you try to pro project yourself and think, okay, what's going to happen? Am I going to stay the, here? Um, but after a couple of bad episodes, you just roll your eyes and you just, you know, I, what's he going to come up with next? Right, right. Where people get, so people were getting demoralized. I'm sure you weren't alone in that respect. Yeah, and I, I was. Well, my way of dealing with this is to draw cartoons about it, and I think you it, had a you I, had an outlet, which was good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and I think it. I'm hoping it helped some people uh, indirectly by having that that outlet that they could look at, at least to make fun of the situation. Do you think but, Elon um, saw those cartoons ever? So I give him one that was printed on paper. Um, I don't know how much that may or may not. Did have. that count towards your sheet of your wow. co your wow. pile of code? <laughs> this is what I've been working on here. <laughs> it did not. It did not. Uh, I was I was originally called for one of those meetings and then it got canceled. Uh, always last minute. You never met did, with this, anybody to review your contributions for the past few months. I did not, but I know huh. some people who have, and I was scheduled to do that, which is... What, was, what, would that, what were those like, the people who had, had them? Um, well, um, I only got some vague comments about them, but <laughs> it, I think it depended a lot on the interviewer, as most of them were Tesla engineers, right. and they're, well, they some of know. them were, I'm sure they're great, but they, yeah, they don't, they don't know, know anything about front end website. <laughs> development <laughs> so what was the cartoon you gave elon um let me post a link it was one just where, tell me the number i can i can i've got the whole oh great oh i was going to line numbers just like with jeff this is like cartoon yeah, number give me, okay. give me the cartoon number just like jeff <laughs> you're, you're filling in for jeff it's not a democracy manu okay this one you gave him oh i love this one so you've got uh, you've got somebody who looks a lot like olive oil. Uh, so th this was this one was actually a hundred percent stolen from something Stacy said at, in one episode, and that's that was uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, Stacy should get the credit for this. So one. that's Stacy saying, "You break it, you buy it." Yes, <laughs> and absolutely. Uh, and there's all these uh, ceramic logos of all the big tech companies: Snapchat, Google, Meta, and unfortunately, Elon has accidentally knocked the Twitter. <laughs> ceramic onto the ground where it has smashed what did stacy say was it that you break it you buy it i think she said yeah she did said say this. that i remember saying that there we go see i have inspired art y'all art, <laughs> you are so exciting thanks <laughs> manu <laughs> this is awesome so i can't i can't give you the original drawing for this one because i already gave it to someone else but that, I that would. is fine you you gave it to elon that's that's so cool. No, no, I gave him a print. I gave the original oh, to, okay. to a colleague. Did, did, I'm, I'm okay. Do you know what Elon's reaction was? So this is pretty benign. It's kind of funny. Um, yeah. It's not an insult to Elon. In fact, right. he probably felt a little bit this way, like, oh, boy, now I got to buy it. Yeah, and that's what he said. Uh, he just took the cartoon and he said, well, I bought it anyway. <clears throat> um, I had written a, a small uh, handwritten note in the corner saying something like, I hope you like having a court jester at Twitter all, oh. or you'll have to get me fired. Yeah. But I don't think he, I don't think he read that. He does, I don't think he <laughs> likes a court jester at Twitter. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure not. In fact, one of the things that happened today is he uh, kicked, finally kicked off Elon Jet. Uh, he was shadow banning it, which is hysterical given all the things he said about shadow banning. Uh, so much for absolute freedom of speech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, shadow banning, which is widely misinterpreted by the right as no one can see you, merely means you're deranked. You're not, you're not going to get promoted as much. Uh, right? It, it, am I correct saying that, Manu? That it's not like no one, people can see you. They just, but they have to go, they have to know to see you. And I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, there's uh, Mike Masnick wrote, no wrote an article about it uh, on Tech Dirt in which he said it was quite widely put about what what shadow banning was that wasn't accurate. Um, and that mm. uh, even though Twitter has many, many times explained <laughs> what, how the shadow banning worked, uh, everybody misinterpreted it. And then Elon, of course, uh, who claimed, you know, 
otherwise used it, <laughs> used it against Elon Jet. That poor uh, kid has been now kicked off. He initially Elon banned uh, the Elon Jet account, but not the Bezos Jet account, <laughs> which some people took as interesting. I think the uh, kid who uh, who did it has been kicked off uh, now as is all of his accounts. But we've all followed him. He moved to Mastodon, so you can expect Elon's Jet on Mastodon. Good luck taking that down. Elon, <laughs> I will follow that. Um, yeah, Elon's jet still uh, still around, just somewhere else. I love this uh, cartoon. I think this is uh, exactly what anybody who runs a company needs: is a little uh, light, light, and I mean really light ribbing. Yeah, yeah. I would, yeah. I would agree. I tried, you know, when I was uh, d debating whether to try and make a fool of myself by walking up to him and giving him a cartoon. And deciding which one, uh, I try to get a good compromise between something that would be perceived that as bootlicking, it would be not very critical at all, <laughs> right, yeah, right, yeah. and and something that would be too critical, which also existed, which would maybe get me fired on the spot. So I, I try to pick something in the middle. Yeah, here uh, here is Jack Sweeney. He's a college kid who does the uh, jet trackers. He uh, he tooted. Elon gave me no warning, plus he suspended all of my accounts, half of which track aircraft like NASA aircraft, experimental aircraft, weather, Air Force, not people, uh, including my personal account. So, Elon, we know now, I think it's pretty clear, Elon does not take light ribbing well. Yeah, I, I would argue that maybe he doesn't really have a sense of humor in the sense that he has a sense of humor when it applies to making fun of others and possibly finding things funny, but if not being deliverer, able to, if you will. Yeah. What yeah. comics yeah. call that punching down. Right. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. He's good at punching down. Well, he doesn't have anyone to punch up to. I, guess. <laughs> I mean, I might disagree with you on that, uh, but all right. <laughs> he's certainly nobody there's, richer. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's that concept. I was, I was reading about it somewhere of the quote unquote oppressed billionaire where all these people are like, yeah. people are so mean to us. And I'm like, I think you may have just been not surrounded by reality for so long. You, you, it, it's very hard to shed if that is part of your image and mental process to be like, I'm fighting against the man. I mean, even today, I'm still like my 18 year old self who was like, I'm fighting against the man. And I'm like, Stacy, really? Stacey, no, you're you covering technology You are the man, Stacy. I That's am the problem. The man. <laughs> but yeah, so I think I get it, but I'm also like, oh, be better us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, again, if you want to see these, they're very, they're, they're wonderful. Twit, T W I T T O O N S dot com. And uh, here's one. What's, what the, what's going on? Oh, it's Robbie from Tesla in the cockpit. He's only ever driven electric. It's a jet going down, smoking on the way down. Where's the pilot? I think you fired him. But don't worry, Elon, you're still the greatest. Uh, I think you were still at Twitter when you wrote that one. Wow. I I would need to look at the date. It says 11 so 7. Fast. So I, I. No, then I was already gone. It right was 11. It was 1st November, November 1st. November 1st. So everything pre November 1st you, you did as an employee. <laughs> right. So so this one. <laughs> This one I'm I'm gonna get less let Leo describe it because he must he's much better. But this one this one came after the uh rumors that Elon was gonna let about seventy five percent of the staff go. And this I think the the rumor broke exactly when the company was trying to have a, a company meeting to plan for what's gonna what are we gonna do next year. I also oh. love what you've done with the Tesla logo because you didn't want to infringe on their copyright, I guess, so or their trademark. So you have a what is obviously a Tesla logo, but really looks kind of creepy, like a spider. Like a spider. Yeah. yeah. It's an M. It's an M. But I, <laughs> oh, from I Musk, I get it. Uh, Very cool. So there is a sword of Damocles hanging over these two Twitter employees' heads. The sword is is uh, engraved with the word 75%. Elon is above with scissors cutting the string. And uh, one employee says to the other, uh, you done writing your 2023 goals yet? <laughs> My goal, not to be hit in the head with a big sword. <laughs> Speaking of poaching, I need to poach Leo for a narration. I'll do, we'll do it. We'll do book. it. We'll do the, when the Netflix calls and you want to do that, we'll do that. I'll Great. be, I'll be the, uh, here's the tech article I was referring to before Musk 
riled everyone up with his misleading Twitter files about shadow banning, Musk used the tool to hide, hide the account tracking his plane. Um, what do you think of those Twitter files, by the way? Does it make you uncomfortable to see all that internal stuff? So I, I have to, uh, this is also my bad uh, or, or good <laughs> engineering. And is if I, if I don't know something, I can just say, I don't know. I haven't seen those. So I have no idea. I, I have no, uh, no clever opinion, much less on this. Good. I don't know yet. Enough I, said. I, 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 need, to, I enough. need to see. You probably don't you want know, to I'm read sure them. Yeah. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. Yeah. We've talked about it. I don't need to reiterate it. It's fine. Okay. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm just peppering you with questions, trying to get the sure. inside story from Manu <laughs> Cornett. <laughs> How do we know when to leave Twitter? Do you have like a line? I feel like I'm, I'm trying to figure out my Rubicon. Like when I'll do we say- I'll tell you what my oh, Rubicon this... was. My Rubicon oh, was when he- Yours doesn't count. You, you well, I've, like been, I've left many times, but you know what? <laughs> I think this should be your Rubicon when he says, my pronouns are prosecute Fauci. That's, yeah. that's, that was... that's unacceptable. And, and then the other thing- the way he attacked Yoel Roth. That was terrible. Horrifically, Yoel and his family have had to move out of their house, much like Brianna Wu did. Yeah. What, what I'm increasingly feeling is that Elon, not maybe, maybe wasn't his intent all along, but Twitter, and you will, I'm sure, agree, uh, all of you, has the capability to be used as a weapon, a very sharp it does. weapon. And Elon but knows that, that and I think is now using it that way intentionally to rile up people to use his Elon stands and have them attack. It is Elon's army now. And he's using Twitter like one of those IRC chatbot command and control centers. And he's always done this anyway with Dogecoin and stuff. Uh, he loves mm -hmm. the emperor. You know, the emperor waves his hand and the price of Doge goes up. And then the emperor yes. waves his hand yeah. and the price of Doge goes down. Well, if that was just a toy. Now he's realizing I can raise entire armies. I can I can make a man move out of his house. I can ruin somebody's life with my new little toy. And I think like a kid pulling flies wings off of flies, that's what he's all about these days. And that is But yet he also banned Kanye West. Well, he brought him back and then he banned him. No, no, it's all what Elon wants. And that's why Yoel Roth quit. He said there's no need for trust and right. safety when one man makes all the decisions. Okay, because right. the, the, the question is, is there, is there a distinction between the fact that Elon is the CEO and owns the company? I mean, because by that, by that, I, you know. You're sharpening his sword. Tesla. Anything you tweet, you're sharpening his sword. Okay, so that's an interesting point. Okay, so then, yeah, I would. I that for me was the line. And uh, I deleted all my tweets, deleted all my DMs. Uh, I deleted my DMs. Yeah, well, that's probably smart, and then uh, which is hard because you have to do it one by one. Man, uh, that is very, very hard. I even deleted the DM I got ten years ago from Steve Martin, who said, "Hey, just wanted you to know I'm a fan." I even deleted that because I don't, I don't want Elon to have any of that. Were Were you able to export them first? No, I didn't export them. It's fine. I don't. I don't really. Who care. exports? A All lot these of people, people do. Like, I'm like everybody. Is, I know. Apparently. But that to me, Twitter is the ultimate in ephemera. So I'm just kind of like, wow, all, I mean, yes, there are things I'm like, oh, that one witty thing I said, how cool was that? But I guess, I don't know. It wasn't that cool. <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. Like, hindsight, nothing I say yeah. is worth that. There are the people problem who I never throw this, anything out and they just, they want everything, including all their old tweets. Digital hoarders. Yeah. The problem I have with this is when Mr. Laporte says he wants to leave or anybody says they want to leave the platform the masses are just coming out and it's like, ah, oh, you shouldn't leave. You shouldn't leave when it's your freaking choice. If, if it's all about free speech and free choice, why can't we just up and leave these platforms and that be the end of it? Why must there be someone stepping in that don't know you from a hill of beans telling you, you know what? No, you should, you should stay here. You, you, well, yeah, hey, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm the frog. I get to decide how warm my bath should be, right? <laughs> right, right. I, I exactly. Good line. Bath. Good line. Good line. Well, yes. it got too hot for me a long time ago. I, actually, I left almost immediately when Elon started <laughs> making jokes mas about masturbation and mastodon. That was like the that was the line for me. But I, yeah. at this point, though, I think any sane person. Uh, What's your preferred temperature, Anton Stacy? <laughs> yeah, that's the question. Isn't it? Right now? You know, I'm I'm fine on Twitter for now. 
you know, there's still some days that it, it bugs me a little more because I'm, I hate the fact that I block somebody every single day. There's at least one person that gets blocked every single day. I think that's stupid. Um, but at the same time, there's still my community there. And then speaking of Mastodon, if I hop into Mastodon right now, it's starting to annoy me a little bit over the last couple of days because everybody's talking about Twitter and Elon. And I'm like, wasn't that the whole point of getting off of that platform, getting off of Twitter was to get over here and, and have a bit of fresh air, not to sit here and just continue to rehash well, the show that's happening. First of all, platform. we can't stop talking about it here either. And I know everybody would like us to. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, but, okay, but, look, but that will go, go, that, that go, that this go away. That will go away. That will go away. I mean, honestly, right. it comes and goes with the temperature. I don't see a lot of that on Twitch social. Mostly we're talking about other things. Um, I think most people, when they first get there, they it's such a compulsion to check. Ashley, Twitter. can I correct myself, sir? Not necessarily Twitch social. It's definitely the home feed and federated feed is where I see it. Yeah. Well, just, um, you don't have to watch the local. either of those. The home feed is who but, you follow, so unfollow yeah. some of those people. If, if, at yeah, least exactly. And I'm like, well, I guess it's time for me to let this go. Because can you, this, what's the point? Yeah. Can you set yourself some kind of filter or anti-filter? And Yeah, you yeah. can filter out all the word, anytime the word Twitter. Yeah, I've been setting some filters yeah. in. Yeah. Just, you know what? I think there are a lot of people <laughs> would like to have an Elon filter on this show. Uh, and I don't... <laughs> I don't blame him. But, but again, this is news. Hello. I get that. I would this like is one. news. Bye bye. <laughs> you know, I, I'm sick of the dude, but this is news, and he's he's going to continue to be the gift that keeps on giving to the news platforms. Yeah. But it's when the I same go thing to when, when social people, media, people start coming to Mastodon. And then a, a lot of the tweet, a lot of the tooting was about Mastodon, right? How to use <clears throat> yeah. it? Why does yeah. it do this? Why, that's all going to come down. That'll go away. It's just the, yeah. you know, it's just people new to the platform and so forth. It's the uh, S word show that. Keeps on giving. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm well, sorry, I've left Mr. the S Jason word. Howell. I have, yes, <laughs> I've learned. I've learned which words to avoid. <clears throat> you know. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Producer, for my. <laughs> sorry, we bleep you. We bleep you. It's no big deal. Uh, I I almost feel <clears throat> like Stacy to answer your question. I almost feel like I don't even want to give him any uh, numbers by going to the site and and looking at it. Well, I mean, so Manu asked. Um, what my temperature was or what the temperature yeah. that, and I find myself only going there once a day to respond to people. I still automatically tweet out stories and then, you know, I have sponsorship obligations that I have to tweet out, but I'm definitely not like when I get the wild hairs where I'm like, Oh, I want to say this. I'm like, Oh, I just don't say it anymore. Um, Cause I'm not a Mastodon yet. Y'all I'm going to get there. I just, it took forever to drag me to Twitter and, this is just going to be a pain. Um, but yeah. And, but yeah, I miss it. I'm sad. And now there's they're a, talking about banning great talk. TikTok. There's a great talk by a certain Jeff Jarvis explaining how to get on Mastodon. Yeah, I know. I've, I, it's not, a, it's not a question of how to, for me, it's just a question of like mentally sitting yeah, down yeah, and doing it. I'm a little ADD, but wait, wait. I know you're trying you're to talking about she's, banning TikTok. She's trying to change the subject. This is so cute. There you go. I, love it. I, love <laughs> I heard you do that. She's I heard a, you say she's, both. She's definitely you know, now they're doing host. it to TikTok. Nudge, nudge, hint, hint. <laughs> way. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, I this one uh, we talked a little bit about, that, about this on uh, Twit, um, and in fact, there was a very good piece that Steve Gibson talked about yesterday. Kaspersky answered one mm -hmm. of the questions people have about TikTok, which is, you know, when uh, when state governors like Governor Abbott, uh, Christy Noem of South Dakota, uh, Maryland, say, oh, you know, they're gathering too much information. Um, uh, Kaspersky wrote a great piece, I thought, on trust and safety, privacy and security. Is TikTok safe to use? And it's probably worth reading. They actually looked at what information is sent back uh, what, you know, privacy concerns you, you, you should have. And I, you know, I don't think anybody says it's a, a bad idea, for instance, for the Department of Defense to say to military personnel, don't use TikTok, don't have it on your phone any more than you should have Strava on your phone or any on the running app because these are used, you know, these are location trackers. Um, I think honestly, TikTok you, if you're on an iPhone, you can turn off location services. You don't have to give them your contact information. You can use TikTok 
pretty privately, especially if you're not publishing videos. If, if you're not publishing videos, if you're just watching videos, and I think probably most TikTok users just watch, uh, don't turn on the camera. Don't turn on the microphone. So let me mm -hmm. let me tell you what Kaspersky, bottom line, is TikTok safe to download? Mm -hmm. So is, is TikTok safe to use? Last paragraph. The answer is not necessarily clear cut. Much of the media commentary around TikTok concerns focuses on issues relating to national security, but most users are unlikely to have nationally sensitive content on their phones. For individuals, the risk is not significantly different to that of other popular social media apps. I mean, Facebook gathers much more information. They even point mm -hmm. that out uh, than TikTok. And then you might say, well, yeah, but Facebook is an American company and TikTok is a Chinese company. Ultimately, Kaspersky says it's about being aware of data security and online privacy issues, making a personal choice. Uh, I think if you want to make that choice, you should read this. There, But I will summarize that there is no secret message inside TikTok that's sending everything that you do on your phone back to the servers in mainland China. It's not spying on you in that respect. It's not <clears throat> gaining any more information than any other app, including Twitter, by the way. Uh, those that information is valuable to marketers for sure. It's it's not any worse than everything else already happening on your yeah. phone. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, I, I and I think it's within the the realm of governments. Uh, it's within the right of governments to tell government employees not to use it on their government phone. Abbott's trying to figure out. He even said, "I want to figure out how to keep people who work for us from not having it on their private phone either." That's Ooh, gonna, Abbott, that is that's going to be egregious tough. overstepping, far, bro. Pushing too far. I think uh, I'm just going to say this. I think that there are governors like Abbott, DeSantis, Christy Noem, who don't who know perfectly well that that you can't do that, but are performing. It's really for a certain group of people. I don't know. Abbott's a petty man. The city of Austin once told him he could not chop down a tree in his yard, and he set off an entire legislative chain to make sure that cities Jeez. no longer had rights to regulate like certain aspects of their zoning to pro prohibit him from <sighs> chopping down his tree. Well, all right. We gotta stop so, giving petty people power. This, this is a bad... Petty people accrue power. They want they it want because it. they're petty. Because they're petty. You know, the, it's like the homeowners association <clears throat> uh, uh, committee member Who's going around saying, I think you have your mailbox letters are too big. Oh, oh. <laughs> Just, yeah, this is this is why I'm like, I should run for the school board because I'm yeah. not petty. Yeah. But I just don't have the impetus. But I'm like, why you, would I you do nailed it? Isn't that a debate all the way back to, to Plato and Socrates and, and you should pick people who don't want to become right. you know, the best yeah. leaders are people who don't want the job. The reluctant leader. Mm hmm Unfortunately. If you're reluctant, you're not going to get the job. <laughs> yeah. And today, like, especially here in the U.S., man, you got to put yourself out and about and spend money and be crazy to get anywhere in terms of, like, knowledge and attention. All right. I got to do an ad because, Stacey, you, you have to understand. Yeah, a three-hour show is not You acceptable. have to understand how this works, Stacey. <laughs> it, the first ad is what determines the length of the show, believe it or not. Because yeah. if I don't get to the first ad, as I haven't in the first hour, it all it all, it all falls to pieces. <laughs> it turns into a bleep show. It's, it all, turns into a it's show. all over, man. <laughs> so you know what? It, your best bet would be instead of worrying about the end of the show, worry about the forget the caboose. <laughs> think about the engine. Okay. The, the engine's engine. pulling the it. whole thing through. So do, what you got to do after about twenty minutes is say, "Not let's talk about TikTok." No. <laughs> Let's talk Let's about bills. <laughs> CDW and HPE GreenLake. Let's talk about that. What about that, Stacey? Uh, Let's talk about GreenLake. You HP know about GreenLake. Green you know it. all about that. This episode of Twig brought to you by HPE, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, GreenLake. Orchestrated by the experts at CDW. What's GreenLake? Do you know, Stacey? You know what GreenLake is. It's their uh, edge to cloud platform. And everybody's talking about it these days. Beautiful people. At CDW, they're probably not going to like me calling them beautiful. How about helpful? Helpful people. They are good looking too. Uh, at CDW, understand that your organization needs simple management over its big data. But with some needing to keep their workloads on-prem, you know, for compliance or organizational requirements, it can be a little challenging to organize and optimize that big data. That's where CDW can help your organization by consolidating and managing all your data in one flexible, unified experience with HPE GreenLake. 
the Edge to Cloud platform. The experience you get with HPE GreenLink is unique because no matter where your data or your applications live, you still can free up energy and resources with automated processes, streamline management, and who couldn't use a little more streamlined management? You know what I'm saying? Not only that, HPE GreenLink creates a seamless cloud experience among multiple data environments thanks to the as-a-service model that meets your remote workforce at the edge. And with unrivaled scalability, you'll see an instant increase in capacity, allowing for greater flexibility and accelerated business growth. So your team can tackle bigger priorities uh, like innovation. When you need to get more out of your technology, HPE Makes data transformation possible. CDW makes it powerful. Learn more at cdw.com slash HPE. Thank you, CDW. We appreciate the support. And thanks to all of you who, when you go there, use that address because then they know you saw it here. CDW.com slash HPE. So, Amanda, did you have a stack of, of uh, printed out code like... Uh, like I a, did not. Yeah. I did not. And first, I'd like to propose that the length of the show be determined by a combination of, of time to first add and amount of <laughs> waffle batter left. At <laughs> waffle batter. Waffle batter. I thought you said lawful batter. Is your waffle, waffle batter lawful? It better be. <laughs> She's turning us out. She's ignoring us. Look at oh, that. No. She's not she even paying any attention. She, she thought the ad would last longer. She thought the ad would last longer. So Leia Culver, who worked uh, at Twitter on Spaces, posted that picture of her sleeping in the, you know, holding up her code. It was looked like a Java, JavaScript code holding up her printouts. Uh, you didn't, you never do that, huh? Um, so just before getting fired, I was also trying to get a tiny tool to help people do this. So to help them not get fired. That's so exactly kind of the code that Lee Eon I did not want to see. <laughs> I can tell you right now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't submit that, that code, but it would be like, uh, I actually did it just for myself because I was called in and I thought, okay, how can I yeah. present this? Yeah. Uh, it's not just going to be printed out of, of, uh, all the files. So I, I did something that would look into your your uh, commit history and do some little colors and stuff like this. So I, I prepared to oh, do it for myself. One. A pretty one. Nice. Yeah, it was slightly prettier that would that would uh, show what you you've done as opposed to printing the whole file, which other people may have written most of it. <clears throat> yeah, um, we didn't have any of that when our company went under, and I'm sad for it. Like when GigaOM exploded, we only had an hour and a half, two hours. Oh. And I was like, contacts, downloads. Right. And I was trying to warn my colleagues. I was like, everybody, here's what's going on. You're talking yeah. about that tool that uh, Manu got fired for. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yeah. you, you, <laughs> exactly. That's what I did. Yes. <laughs> wow. Well, at least it's uh, it's the hypothesis at this point. We, yeah. they didn't we don't really know. Give any they haven't said it, but we'll see you in court, Elon. Uh, no, I, I shouldn't say that. That's a rude thing to say. Did uh, what do you what do you write in primarily? Is it uh, JavaScript and React code or? At Twitter, it was yes, it was built in JavaScript and React for the for the web client. Um, yes. Yeah, but when you wrote something like that, that would have been a Python script, maybe, or that would have been the combination. Uh, let me try to remember. Um, there would have been a combination of, of Python and HTML and right, JavaScript right. to make the thing interactive. Maybe I I can't. You remember have to have a front right. end, but then you got to have a back end that's going to scrape through the mail and. Fine. Yeah, it, well, it wouldn't for this part. It would just look at the 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 commit Subject. history. Oh, oh of nice. your, the code that you've written. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, it went through your GitHub. Do, you, do yeah. they use yeah. GitHub at Twitter? They use GitHub for a few open source projects. Otherwise, it's like internal, internal Git, Git repositories. Git? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I shouldn't ask GitHub. Git, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I always Manu, like to ask programmers. But some questions. some some projects were open sourced, and I I saw yesterday that some of the people who were owners of this uh, these open source projects were fired, and people inside Twitter didn't have access to. <laughs> oh. Oops. Whoopsies. <laughs> well, well you they would have. It's open source, so they could read it, but they didn't have right. admin can't, access can't to commit it. You can't take it offline. You can't do anything. Yeah. So uh, that's the problem with moving fast and breaking things. You break things. Yeah. Oh, um, Manu, when you draw, do you draw using 
pen and paper? Do you draw on a tablet? Do you draw? I, I was just tried. curious. I, I do pen and paper because I, I, I use a paintbrush. Like, so it's so, oh. t- you know, the styluses of, are much better now. They can detect like, the angle and the pressure, but mm-hmm. it's still not quite there yet, you know, about the, the brush bristles against the, the paper. So I, I try to go full digital, but I wasn't able to. Is it, So I'm looking at mine. Is this a print or is this, this must be a print of this one. This is a print, yes, because yeah. I do the color on the computer. And I, I still have the original for this one. <clears throat> I might sell them at some point you should. if I That's, need money. <laughs> yeah, no, this, is, this might be your most famous cartoon, you think? Yeah, well, it was published 10 years ago. I've, I've spent most of the 10 the last 10 years trying to convince myself that, that this wasn't a one trick pony. <laughs> oh, was this your first? No, it was not my first, but it was, it was an early one. Very yeah. early. Well, I'm really proud to have it. And as I said, it's on, you know my, what? on my wall in my home office. Yeah. Likely, like Leo, Menno, you need a third party who believes in you and who will go out there. And I say this because you have actually, you know, you have actual talent. You should be doing this and you should make it available to people. And if you're not gifted with Ant's confidence and drive, which most of us aren't, if only we could be as awesome as Ant is. Like I have, I have my husband. That's all it is. I'm foolish. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You have Andrew. (laughs) He does that that for you. And I have my wife. I have Lisa. She does that for me. I'm also very, I'm also foolish enough to hand, Elon Musk a drawing, but I'm not the kind of uh, lucrative <laughs> it's, foolishness. It's, it's a different thing. foolishness. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm foolish enough to do all kinds of silly things that I'm like, ooh. I'm glad you didn't mistaken. hand him this uh, drawing. Do you all love me very much, says King Elon, sitting on his throne. Yes, say the sycophants, kissing his feet. Oh, except man. for the one who whispers, I don't, but I need my visa. How many of the people oh. who stayed behind would you guess were on an H-1B visa uh, or maybe needed health care. I mean, it's almost as if they were forced to stay. It's yeah. coercive. Yeah. It's really hard to say. Uh, I only, the only one or two people that I know, I, they might not even be there by, by now, um, had visa issues, but I'm very biased in the people that I you know, choose to become You only friends. hang out with foreigners. No, not foreigners, oh, okay. but I'm a, <clears throat> I mean, I'm biased. <laughs> You know I have I no filter, man. This I'm dude's like, not right. Good grief. He is well, not right. I'm, I'm, I'm French. I only hang out with French people. As, as people. is I right. If I were French, French, I would only hang out with French people, too. <clears throat> that might be Americans. the most French thing I've heard you say. They won't let me hang out with them because I'm not French. I have a French name. That gets me halfway there, anyway. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm biased in that people who are my friends will be less likely to right. be on board with Elon's right. views. Right, right. You're not hanging out with... But there are probably some Elon stands also who are excited and want to go beast yeah. mode and, you know, uh, don't mind <clears throat> sleeping in the conference room and all of that stuff. I'm sure. I, I was willing to, initially, I was willing to work hard for uh, what was... We didn't really know what was going to happen. I, I uh, slept on the couch once. Uh, uh, on that weekend for the Twitter blue stuff, I was uh, I was willing to give it a try. I just uh, I think he did it. I think the way, even if you put aside all the the very clumsy way that this was uh, the way it was executed, I think it was also just stupid in a way that he initially let um, laid off half of the company without filtering for who was sympathetic to his views. I think he should have done it the other way. He should mm-hmm. go around. He should have sent okay. that email saying, you know, you need to be quote unquote hardcore, whatever that means. Send that out first and then see who's on board and then maybe select for other stuff. But if you fire half the people and maybe some of them, you catch some of them which would have been on board, that just seems foolish to me. Yeah. I supported the, the hardcore message. It's just his delivery was wrong. I, I got where he was coming from, but he could have gone about it a better yeah, way. Yeah, you, you compared it to a, a, a like a coach, coach in the sports, right? Which right. that part totally makes sense, but the way it was phrased and the way it was organized was just not not okay. You were gone before that email went out. Yeah, I was. Um, and I, would you have been hardcore? Good question. <laughs> I think I. I think knowing what I knew already then, I would probably not. No, I don't think I would have flipped the button. But even the, the, the lawyers are, are laughing at the vision that the failure to click a button 
equals a resignation. That doesn't really work that way. Yeah, it's not an it's not a it's not an action. It's a it's a lack of it's action. It's like if you ever read like Ask a Manager or anybody like this is like an HR nightmare story. Like yeah. watching it unfold in real life has been yeah. like whenever you read these, you're like, nobody's. Well, good news. You like fired that. the HR team. So yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. Whoever was going to have the <laughs> nightmares. Yeah, they're, they're all gone. They're gone. <laughs> so the salute emoji I'm told was becoming uh, very common. You didn't uh, on Slack and so forth. You did a nice uh, little version of that uh, with the Twitter bluebird saluting. Uh, this yeah. is what people would put on their uh, Slack when they were, when they were on the way out. Yeah. Right. Yes. And in fact, when I was uh, contacted by people from the press asking if they could, if I could put them in touch with other former employees, I just told them to search for that emoji on Twitter and who would find a whole bunch of <laughs> You'll people. You'll find quite a few. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. And it says it's solidarity. Really, I like it. Yeah. Because it's not merely, it's not see ya. It's like, I really salute what we did together, <laughs> what we created yeah. together. And yeah. And I salute those of you who stay. I salute those of you who leave. It's a really, I think it's a perfect gesture. Teammates. Um, it might not be that. the middle finger that someone to, to, to use as their gesture, <laughs> but I think it's the right one. I think it's like, you know, I salute you. Um, this is the, I haven't seen this before. I only worked for two companies, but there's still a community of people who used to work for Twitter who are still hanging out together and they have a special Discord server. And it seems like some of the community has survived the events, which I think is, is good, really talks to the, the nice uh, camaraderie. I have to point out, if you go to Emojipedia, that this the saluting emoji, there's a variety of ways to do it. Apple's clearly a salute. I'm not sure what Google's is. The Twitter version looks like you're getting patted on the head by Elon. So, <laughs> so I don't, okay, I don't think it's the exact. <laughs> Right. Good job. You're, you're saving me money. Yeah. <laughs> every time I see, every time I see that emoji, I have, to, I have to try to figure out a way to zoom in. It's my, yeah, like um, what's going on there? Yeah. My family uses that quite a bit. Um, I finally got used to it, but my family was using it quite a bit in our own Slack for when I give an order. Oh, and I'm they like, go, yes, sir. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this? Thing? Is he scratching be, his head? Yeah, that might be but now little... I see it. <laughs> a little bit of a backhanded, uh, okay, Dad. Um, let, it, let it be backhanded. I'll fix them. <laughs> uh, the king of motivation here. Create and dominate. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I'm more like a create and go back to bed. But, you know, we each of us. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. Yeah. Each of yeah, us so has right. back to yeah. bed. Uh, here's the, uh, here was the red pill, blue pill uh, question. You know, are you ready to? Go beast mode, or are you going to leave? Mm, mm, and mm. Uh, the blue pill was fly away. The red pill was burnout, slaving away for a sociopathic clown. Mm, strong words. I think your what's, attitude changes a little bit. <laughs> I would. I would not. This is. This would not be the one that I printed and Don't gave give that to Elon. <laughs> Unless you're on then, your way. Then out. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be worried only about getting fired, but I mean, punched in the face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ahead, you know, uh, part of that is like after, I, okay, I will just say when you are in the trenches, even if it's a toxic workforce, if you are creating something you love, it can be, you, you don't stay for your sociopathic clown boss. You stay no. because you, the people well, that's you work right. with. And, and cause of what you've done. So, and you, same reason yeah, you're so staying with Twitter as a user, Stacy, because there's value you know, the, and you, don't uh, wanna, and you the, did something, you accomplished something, or you just want to go back to bed. <clears throat> that, that's what I did originally. I was, I think the in between the time when Elon took over and the time when I was fired, I was really not working for him. I was working for my coworkers. For your squad. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Avoid getting them but fired. Companies but companies take advantage of that. Yeah. They do. Yeah. I realize that. Yeah. Um, and, and not, not necessarily in an evil way. I mean, you can take advantage of that to like band people together to do cool stuff. Right. But you can also, you can really abuse your workers in some ways. Not abuse, but... We try to do yeah. that with our workers. We try to give them that false sense of camaraderie. And, you know, we do team binding, binding exercises stuff. And then that way, when we cut their pay, they just, uh, they're going to be loyal to each other. It's just a good, just oh. good management practice. You provide yeah. coffee. I mean, Did my Did I goodness. say that out loud? Did you? Well, why haven't I gotten that dadgum coffee machine? Well, I'm, I'm thinking I think you should go to... Uh, <laughs> To the Heritage Carter, Global Ant. Partners and uh, look at the Twitter auction and maybe pick up one of these lovely uh, 
coffee machines is La Marzocco Strada Tre e -e Semi Auto Espresso Machine. Do you look at that with fondness, Manu, and go, oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I, I remember that um, machine. Mm. Yeah, to be fair, this would be the case at, at most tech companies. Sure. And this, is, this is really an industry where we get to be divas as to sure. who we choose to work for. And we get to have ethical qualms. Well, most people don't, you know, you can't really say to most companies or bosses, like, oh, I don't really like the way you do I'm going to uh. quit. <laughs> but because there's more demand than, than supply for these jobs, then we get to be uh, spoiled. Early on, there were a lot of articles uh, saying, yeah, everybody in Silicon Valley is looking at Elon secretly going, yeah, show those engineers, cut them down to size. And, and, and you even said this, Twitter was fat. There was definitely fat to cut. And any new owner would have done this. Yep. Yeah, I think so. I think in some way the, the, the acquisition deal may have prevented some of this because there might be right. some terms in there to avoid. Uh, that could have been a material uh, event. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I don't really deny that it, it was needed. And some other companies did it at the same time. It seems like Facebook did sure. some uh, Stripe 000. on the same day. Yep, yep. It was There's almost 40,000 last better. month across Silicon yeah, Valley, I believe. Yeah, much bigger numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I still, it's horrible for anybody to lose their job and we can't lose sight of that. That it is, yeah. a, that it is a terrible thing, but I'm still yeah. might take advantage of this auction and pick myself up a Hobart HS seven N 13 inch automatic slicer. I mm. tell you, you know, for, for all your deli meats, for all my deli meats at <laughs> home, <laughs> you know, I have, right. Lisa already tells me I have too many gadgets on the counter. If I, if I bring mm. home a deli slicer. She might get a little, yeah. a little upset. Much respect, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Although I have to say, uh, one of the one of the slicers, and I thought this was really odd that they're selling is a manual deli slicer. Like has oh, a dude. like you, it's not electric. You, right. you turn a crank. I thought that was. Did I talk about that last week or was that on another show? I'm, it's all a blur. Dude, if you get you one of those, yeah. I'm coming to your house for a Laporte pastrami uh, uh, sandwich. A uh, pastrami? I'm going to get it. <laughs> I'm going to do the pastrami. I'm very tempted by some of this stuff. Father Robert said we should do a 24 hour, because it's a, only a 24 hour auction on the 17th of next month, that we should do a live 24 hour live stream. Get it. Of get us a professional bidding. steamer oven. That's what you I know. Need. Look at all this stuff. Projectors. Look at this. What They've are those got mics the, for Polycom. Polycom Real Presence Trio 8800 yeah. IP. Now, it's a little deceptive because all the bids start at like $25 or $50. Here's that 55 inch Google Jam board. I've wanted one of those for ages. But see, I don't think it'll go yeah. for $15, $50. Leo, I have, a, I have a suggestion you're going to hate. I think you should relabel those, in, not in dollars, but in how many years of Twit Club. Club Twit. Club Twit memberships. Oh. And this is cheap. Just, one, just cheap. one year. Yeah, I always say this. Club Twit is a buck less than a blue check. And look how much you get. You say in the uh, Economist article that you and everybody else knew exactly what was going to go happen to the verified check. Play. Anybody would have known. Uh, Yoel Roth had written a memo warning Elon, you're going to have big impersonation problems if you do this. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's the, there's a, a few days ago, there was a, a, a list of 10, 10 things that you should do as a toxic uh, manager or leader. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that really checked out pretty well with things <laughs> like, you know, keep your workers always on edge, give them yeah. you know, deadlines all the time. Don't give them time to think. So, you, you know, if you know that you need to make this deadline or you're fired by Monday, then you don't have that's, time to think, hey, such a scary... is it okay, a good thing that yeah. you're trying to make me do? Here is the Burkle 330M STD manual flywheel slicer with stand. Do you think Andrew would let you have this in the house? I think. Um, I don't think I need that. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to have, you know, maybe, you know what? We should get it for Mark Zuckerberg because he's always smoking the meats. Now he could be slicing the meats. I mean, that, that is thing so is badass. terrifying. I'm scared of my mandolin. So, I mean, that yeah, thing. This is a mandolin Good. on steroids. Yes. How about paper? <laughs> Very thin, paper thin waffles. Oh, <laughs> they are wafer thin. <laughs> um. 
That's just a crepe. Come on, you know crepe? that, man. Uh, is that a crepe? <laughs> just a crepe. Yes. <laughs> uh, in other news, we, we were um, laughing this morning on Floss Weekly, which was a great episode. Who was on Floss Weekly this week? It was a roundtable with Mr. Bennett and Mr. Powers and Mr. Searles, and we talked about the verified check and how it's been updated. Um, like with mine, it says this is a legacy verified account. Oh, it may. Or may not be notable. I feel like every time I go to Twitter, I'm giving Elon a penny. But okay, let me go look and see what I got. I'm pretty sure that's what yours says too. It's this it says it's verified be because that's it's hilarious. notable in government news. I still have the notable. Oh, you still have that one. But huh? I yeah, think but I stopped paying, so I think that probably I stopped paying too. And yeah. a lot of the people <gasps> that I follow, theirs have been changed to what mine said. What's yours say, Stacey? Is- Mine says it's a legacy verified account. It may or may not be notable. But here's what happened. Twitter said they weren't going to take my money anymore. So I was like, okay, great. Because I wasn't going to pay uh, for Twitter Blue anymore, obviously, even though I did for a while. And then mm-hmm. they, they, I just saw they re-upped it. And I actually need to unsubscribe right now. So that's you're paying for it and you still got the weird Not one. anymore. Oh. Well, that's, that's fine. Because maybe because I'm paying for it, they're like, I don't know. Because it used to say I was possibly notable. Which <laughs> that's so insulting. Like, no, no, sorry. It used now. to say this person could no, it be used notable. To say, it used to say I was notable because I was a public figure or a journalist or whatever. Yeah, the right. terminology like was. mine still says like right. But, but now it says they might. Yeah. Uh, they might I'm pivot. looking at Kim Kardashian's right now. Yeah, is she um, notable because I. She says verified legacy verified account may oh. or may not be notable. So I also the, looked at some y'all. folks from ESPN yeah. and other journalists. Yeah. And then I looked at ESPN proper. They have a gold check or a yellow check that says that they have, that they have a official Twitter business account. Huh. huh. Yeah, we knew that they were going to do three colors. That was the, the new plan. Mm-hmm. That was supposed to roll out, wasn't it? Uh like soon, like maybe it's just I maybe it, Monday. Yeah, maybe it's rolling out now. <laughs> I Twitter Monday, won't for some let reason. me unsubscribe. That's interesting. Uh, maybe so they'll, it's maybe they'll start me, uh, selling those wood blocks that you used to be verified, and it's another revenue stream for Elon. I love my wood block. <laughs> I love that. You saw that? That's hysterical. I, well, I didn't see the image, but I, I, <laughs> I have it right here. Shall I go get the it? Wood block. <laughs> how many? How many club foot years is that worth? Oh, that one's worth. <laughs> that one's a whole. It's eighty dollars. It was uh, like I don't like to say this, Manu, because then people are going to say, "I'm sorry." Well, clearly, you're wasting our money on stupid stuff. That, that, that's that's why I said you were going to hate this idea. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do, Manu. You now have an honorary member, so ship. So enjoy, because I might cut you off, buddy. I actually paid for it. I was oh. already a member. Oh, well, now you have a complimentary one. Thank you. Now you get one for like, <laughs> is it lifetime or is it for a year? Oh, and when you're a guest on, on the show. When we send you that coupon happens? code, it makes you a permanent uh, member, I think. Oh, I was yeah. uh, oh. great. I'm not just for a, not just from like a month. <laughs> Here, <laughs> you could be a temporary member. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. You might I'll be notable. You for a I don't know. <laughs> Okay, I, mean, I feel like I need to offset this. These are very well spent seven bucks a month. I, I, I really like it. Don't kick me out yet. Oh, this is interesting. Somebody has recreated the Elon Jet account already. Not the Elon Jet guy. Uh, oh, wow. Apparently, there was, there was a delay. This is interesting. Maybe he got it back. All right, we're going to have to update it. It looks like Elon's jet is back. Maybe he, this is the problem when you have one guy doing trust and safety. He can change his mind. It says isn't it's, the, it's Jack Sweeney. Yes, it's Jack Sweeney, doesn't it? Isn't with the an, source with a suspended of the, account. The huh. source of the information is, isn't it already public? Yeah, it is. And that's, I mean, that was his position all along. Remember, Elon tried to pay him $5,000 to to not do it. And he said, well, I'm, no, I'm going to keep doing it. And Elon, and Elon, I think rightly so, says it's well, it's a security issue, but it's public information. Yeah. But I understand, uh, <clears throat> you know, you, you you don't want everybody to know exactly where you are at any given time. <clears throat> Maybe this is good for <clears throat> Twitter and Tesla and SpaceX employees. This is the billionaire version He's of, uh, hey, look, the bus is coming. He's coming. Watch out, everybody, head down. <laughs> Press the bus button. Stop playing Elden Ring. Here he comes. <clears throat> Sam Bankman-Fried arrested. 
the day before yep. he was going to testify in Congress today, <laughs> or yesterday, I guess. Uh, charges. Uh, it's from the U.S. Attorney for Southern District of New York. With they shared a sealed indictment with the Bahamian government, who arrested and ex is expected to be uh, extraditing him uh, to the United States. Uh, because it's a sealed indictment, I I guess we don't know what the details are. He was going to testify uh, virtually before the House Financial Services Committee Tuesday. Maxine Waters of California, who oversees the committee, says she was surprised at his arrest and disappointed that Congress wouldn't be able to hear from him. Maxine, you <laughs> shouldn't have been surprised. I frankly was surprised that he was going around talking and doing yeah. things and was going to go yeah. testify to Congress. It's like, doesn't anybody want to do anything about this? Isn't it fraud? Seems like an attorney of his would have been like, dude, you need to lay low, be quiet, right? Uh According to a CNBC, the charges against Bankman Freed include wire fraud, wire fraud, conspiracy, securities fraud, security frauds, conspiracy, and money laundering. Uh, the SEC filed a civil complaint also against him yesterday, alleging that the ex-CTO of FTX engaged in, quote, a scheme to defraud equity investors in FTX. See, that's, where, <laughs> that's the thing in the United States you may not do is <laughs> steal from rich people. <laughs> Rich folks, that's don't, the key. Don't rich steal folks. from rich folks. It's all right to steal from the poor folks in Mississippi, but, you know. Exactly. The filing said Bankman Freed raised more than $1.8 billion from investors and that, quote, unbeknownst to these investors, <laughs> Bankman Freed was orchestrating a massive years-long fraud, diverting billions of dollars of the trading platform's customer funds for his own personal benefit and to help grow his crypto empire. <gasps> Wait. Okay, this is breaking news, according to uh, Cyrus Faravar. Uh, Are you reading Twitter again? Are you reading I it? am, because I was trying to cancel my <clears throat> subscription, but hold on. Is this your lawsuit, Cornet versus Twitter? That is me. Yeah, what happened? So a federal <laughs> judge has just ruled against Twitter in your lawsuit, yes! mandating that severance packages to fired employees must include mention of an ongoing lawsuit. In breaking your lawsuit. news. Sorry. And so bring me the, the champagne. We are going to <laughs> we are going well, to coronate no, Manu a, Cornette. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff is in here. So someone has to read Twitter while the show is going. <laughs> That's right. right. I, I literally well, I realize that it's what they're doing isn't actually legal in another sense in California, at least I'm not in California, so it doesn't really apply to me. But I can't unsubscribe to Twitter blue at all. Because I am on the old original two ninety nine account, yeah. So all they'll let me do is upgrade. Oh, you know what you I'm have to do. I, I think you don't. Can't you do that on? Oh no, wait a minute. You didn't do that through the I iPhone. Can't. I didn't do it through the iPhone. Oh, I did it on the web because we were on the, on the show. Yeah. That's right. I did it. On the um, web. And so now I, I literally can't unsubscribe. I mean, so I can what, obviously what call. If your if your card gets declined, if they can't charge you, right? I was about to say I can just call Mastercard and they'll be like, uh, okay, sure, but. I was like, "Oh, this isn't actually allowed. You have to give the person." So, so in us, California, the, you have give us the what is this? So the judge ruled. Do you have any more information on what Manu's case? I think Manu might oh, want right. to know. And I, <laughs> okay, and hold just, on. I'm just saying. I'm looking. And while you're looking, I'm popping the cork. I'm popping the cork. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to make you go to Twitter every so single time, Manu. We're going to open a bottle of champagne every time good news comes out in your case. Woo! Okay, so basically the judge, the lawsuit is saying Twitter. Okay, Go ahead. you can't ask me a question and then talk. I'm listening, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm turning into a mother right now. I'm like mom mode engaged. Okay. okay. Sorry. So the class Cheers. action lawsuit, it looks like. <laughs> give up. I just give up. Let me, let me help you out. Is going to force Twitter to inform former employees that the Cornet versus Twitter lawsuit has been filed so they won't agree to severance packages that are not as favorable as had been previously promised. So basically, hmm. that was the case. And the judge today said, um, they said, no, Twitter, you actually do need to tell people about 
uh, tell, sorry, tell people that this lawsuit exists so they'll know that better severance packages are available to them. Oh, interesting. It's not so much a victory for you, Manu, but for all the others. Exactly. Yeah. But again, that's, all that employees. seems to have been his premise from the get go. Yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. He's, he's doing it for the squad. Yeah. yeah, and that's uh, I, that's why I said I when I was fired, I, I said I was sort of proud of the reason because I wasn't fired for being you know for being a slacker or anything. It was helping other. people. You were doing too good. <laughs> oh, I don't know that. About that I wonder but. how many. I wonder if who. Okay, I wonder right now who has more cases in front of a judge in the United States: Donald Trump or Elon Musk? Because he's got lawsuits galore. The Shareholders of Tesla are suing wow. over his fifty-six. That's a good question. Yeah, right. Fifty-six billion dollar uh, salary last year. Uh, the L.A. Times had a story about um, Tesla being sued because of you know charging people five to fifteen thousand dollars for self-driving technology, which isn't full self-driving. Um, in fact, the, I loved, you know, it must be fun being a lawyer for Elon Musk. <laughs> I love the uh, lawyer's response. They said, well, it's the, your honor, it's not fraud. It's a failure of, uh, we just, we, we shot high, we aimed high and, uh, and we failed. Uh, Tesla lawyers said, quote, mere, mere failure to realize a long-term aspirational goal is not fraud. Um, I, I don't know. It is if you sell people five thousand dollar no, packages. No, it was, just, it, it, was, it was aspirational. Understand? Under, aspirational. I mean, I agree that I agree that this was always aspirational and hopeful. But you really, I mean, in is it caveat emptor? Like you know, sure, you thought this was going to be delivered. You paid five. Sucks to be you, but I mean, I don't know. The I mean, I'm sure that that's what Elizabeth Holmes' lawyers also said. Well, you know, Your Honor. She was just trying to save humanity. No, that was actual fraud. She oh. she lied to her okay. investor. I was like, no, no, that's actual fraud. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just checking. It's she a, knew. It's a, she was it's a difficult question because people are genuinely trying to do something good for the climate by getting electric cars. Yeah. Elon's a Yeah, and I think Elon really thought he was going to, I mean, I think they really thought, I mean, everyone thought self-driving would be here. Even skeptical people. Like by 2025 or 2020 or whatever year we thought we would be in. Back in 2006, and I, this is, by the way, one of the reasons I bought a Tesla. I know you, you have a Tesla too, Stacy. One of the reasons I bought a Tesla was the secret Tesla Motors master plan that Elon posted in 2006. By the way, saying that he was co-founder of Tesla, which he wasn't, but okay. Um, he bought the company from the founders and then erased them. Uh, but his plan was originally to save the planet. Uh, and in fact, to create, you know, to charge people a lot for luxury electric vehicles, but then use that money to create an affordable electric vehicle. Um, Sounds noble, right? In short, the master plan is one, build sports car. Two, use that money to build an affordable car. Three, use that money to build an even more affordable car. Four, while doing... Above also provides zero emission electric power generation options. So he got the first one done. Uh, he's yet to build an affordable car or an even more affordable car. And I don't think he's created zero emission electric power generation options either. He did a part do. Part de. Part de. I'll pronounce Le it right because Manu's here. Part de. <laughs> Good job. Good job. <laughs> I don't know. Whenever I say words in French, I, I sound a little more angry than I am. You really do. It's like German, except it's French. It's very much in character. I agree. I'm sorry. I don't. I, French is a beautiful lilting language. I was watching a documentary about uh, Egypt uh, on National Geographic last night, and they had a French archaeologist. And I said to Lisa, that's such a beautiful language. I love that language. And he didn't sound angry at all. So there you go. Um, part de, let me just go, de, <laughs> let me go see part de, uh, master plan part de, first master plan, which he, he, this is 10 years later, create a low volume car, which would necessarily be expensive. Use that money to develop or meet. See, notice he's modified it already, modified it slightly. Use that money to develop a medium volume car at a, a lower price, not affordable, 
Then, step three, use that money to create an affordable high-volume car. Still hasn't done it. Then four, provide solar power. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Let's see. Part de. He's got a, the boring company, I think, is part of part de. Autonomy hasn't reached that. Can't really blame him though. That's hard to do. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. I bought my Tesla because it was fun AF to drive and it was electric. So I mean, Master Plan Part Du, and this this came out in 2016. So this is only six years old. And some of this he actually uh, has done, I think. Create stunning solar roofs with seamlessly integrated battery storage. We have Tesla uh, power walls and a uh, Tesla solar roof. Expand the electric vehicle product line to address all major segments. He's trying. He's working on that. He's got a cyber truck coming any minute now. <laughs> Develop a self-driving capability that is 10 times safer than manual via massive fleet learning. See, I think, you know, in a way that is aspirational, right? He didn't, it's not, yeah. it's not working. <clears throat> People are dying, but it's, but it's, he's trying. And then enable you, you enable your car to make money for you when you aren't using it. This he promised would happen by 2020, that Tesla owners would be able to make as much as $30,000 a year letting their car, when they're sleeping, go out and pick people up and drive them around. <clears throat> not yeah, but that felt like a silly, that didn't feel like <laughs> it's something in his that part we were going It's in his okay, master yeah, plan. Yeah, but that's, okay. Like oh, anything called a master plan is clearly from like, Pinky in the Brain or a six-year-old's <clears throat> workbook, not from if, um, something you should rely on. I'm going to help out the, the, the show. If, I think if anyone is going to make self-driving uh, happen for reals, I am, I would bet on Google first. Interesting. Um, is, Why uh, is that? Isn't, oh, Waymo is well, a lot farther ahead, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's farther ahead. Yeah. Do, do I wonder if anyone who now owns a Tesla, I, I don't, um, would be worried at the message that it sends, even though they didn't really change anything. They just bought it for the electric uh, part of it. Somebody uh, right. made a bumper sticker. I think they posted it on Mastodon that says, I bought this Tesla pre-Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to bring that up because I still have my, do you still have your Tesla, Leo? No, no. Oh, no. I, I drive okay. a Ford now. Yeah. I mean, I drive all my cars into the ground. So, you know, I, I bought my car in 2015. I'll be driving it for a while, but I will say the the Halo and and I didn't buy it for the Halo. I bought it because it was super fun to drive. How do you but, how do you drive a car into the ground if it's not a plane? How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just an idiom, but yeah. I, Sorry, I'm, no, I'm these, like all these idioms are completely lost. Being me, being me, right. I will literally drive it into the ground in a ditch somewhere. But you know, <laughs> okay. that's just me. But uh, like, I mean, I keep my cars until they're not economical to keep anymore, basically. Um, which is and, the right thing to do. Everybody agrees, right? Well, and I buy them used as well. Yeah. So, so it, I did that all. I did that wrong entirely. You know, from beginning. Yeah. To end. Well. Yeah. I buy them new and I get rid of them in three years because I lease them. <laughs> well, if you lease, leasing is a little bit different. Yeah, with well, the company leases. It's true. It. Like, and and people and, think Tesla drivers are jerks, and yeah. it's not. Do you get that weird? You know, sometimes. Yeah. So I've got I've got a friend who's like, "Oh, you're still driving your Tesla." I was like, "What are you yes, going to do? Get rid of a selling, car? Yeah. yeah. You know, that's not make it a political statement just because you're driving a Tesla. I think that's ridiculous." But you know, I didn't. I mean, although you know what, some of these people are driving Volkswagens, and those people helped the mm. Nazis. So. By the way, that was mm. Elon's point. He said, "Well." Uh, do you drive Volks? Because who was it gave up her Tesla for an Audi or a? Uh, oh yeah, that was uh, oh, Alyssa yeah. Milano. Alyssa, Alyssa Milano. Yeah. And then all German cars are a little suspect. Elon tweeted her, "Yeah, you bought a car made by Nazis, literally made yeah. by Nazis." <laughs> yeah, she's but she's really blowhardy too. So yeah, <laughs> I like that blowhardy. <laughs> are you sitting out there? And I think you're secretly judging us. Wait, no it's a comments. good time for an ad. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like Ant's just sitting there thinking. I just head, sit back and watch. There goes Leo, blow hardy again. Blow hard. I just sit back and watch. There's a lot of people, be it on Twitter or wherever, social platform or whatnot, that are just, they put out a lot of great messages that sound good, um, but then there's no sustenance behind it. So it's, it's just, 
bunch of blowhard doing it for the PR kind of stuff, you yeah. know? But then there's other people like, uh, may she rest in peace, Kirstie Alley, that doesn't really say much, but she did a lot of things in society and for the community. And then there's Craig Newmark, who never says a word, yeah. and is doing a lot of things out there, yeah. you know? No, that's a good point. Is this uh, connected to the, the idea that people should separate the artist from the, the actual person who may or may not have done some bad stuff? Like, am I going to stop reading their books just because they had a... I'll tell you, one of my favorite life? cartoonists mm. really was a jerk on Twitter. <clears throat> so uh, there. Is it Scott Adams? No, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, that's a good question. Joe, as an that artist, joke went right over my head. As, <laughs> as, a, as an artist, that's a really good question. Do you... Uh, Michael Jackson, do you still <clears throat> listen to his music? Or, uh, or R. Kelly? Or... Uh, I mean, now right. if you, I mean, I have driving a Ford, <clears throat> Henry Ford was a notorious anti-Semite. He was a racist. Yeah. yeah. yeah so those, those lots of things were badass. famous if French you, if, writers who did some, some bad stuff. And there was a, there's also a famous French comic who said that we only really ever give a pass if ever to artists. We don't say like of a, of a baker, like, oh yeah, he, you know, he uh, uh, misbehaves with little children on his oven, but he made such a great baguette. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you are a Frenchman. That's a Frenchman. I don't care. That doesn't, that doesn't happen with, <laughs> yeah, only happens with artists that we may even consider giving them a pass. <laughs> I don't know if somebody made a really great baguette. I wouldn't care if he, you know, he was this. He's you know. talking about children. <laughs> He's talking about diddling children. Yeah, oh, it's different okay. than. Why do you draw being... the line? Yeah, well. I still... He's like right there. <laughs> I don't know. A really good baguette's hard to find. All right, you're right. All right, I won't. <laughs> no. We're no. going no. to an ad. No, we're going to <laughs> Yeah, an ad. it's time for another ad. Okay. And waffles. And waffles. Those really thin kind. They call the really thin kind of crepes. Get my oh, crepe crepe. Out. Is it a lawful waffle? That's the question. No <clears> unlawful <throat> waffles. Our show today <laughs> brought to you by, <laughs> by she doesn't like me anymore either. Between Aunt and Stacy, I'm getting a lot of shade here. I gotta tell you. I like you. I like Thank you. Thank you, man. No, you can no stay. shade, sir. No shade, sir. Dude, it's sorry, it's, not, it's not shade. It's it's obvious. <laughs> I'm bad at shade, but I'll tell you what I think. <laughs> this is the 49th sh shade of gray on the scale. <laughs> yeah. There's no side eye with Stacy. It's just straight it's the on glare. Shades of Stacy. I like it. Oh, you know, we may have a show title there. Uh, this, <laughs> this, this week in Google is brought to you by Tanium, the industry's approach to cybersecurity. Uh, okay. Is it, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's flawed. It's fundamentally flawed. IT management and security point tools, they only offer a little bit of the solution you need to protect your environment. You know that by now. And, and I tell you, a lot of perimeter fences say we can, we could stop all breaches when they obviously can't. They, if they could, would there be a ransomware every 11 seconds? I don't think so. Making decisions based on out of date, stale data. Trying to defend your critical assets from cyber attacks with tools that don't interoperate. That's no way for IT teams to navigate today's attack surface. So you gotta you gotta you gotta do something different. And that's why Tanium, it's the right time for Tanium. Tanium says it's time for a convergence of tools, endpoints, IT operations, and security. Bring it all together, interoperate. They've got solutions for government entities, for education, for financial services, retail, healthcare. You can trust their solutions for every workflow that relies on endpoint data. Some of the things Tanium can do for you, asset discovery and inventory. You could track down every IT asset you own instantaneously. You can do risk and compliance management. So important these days. Find and fix vulnerabilities at scale and at, in seconds. Do it fast. Threat hunting. You can hunt for sophisticated adversaries in real time. You got client management, which can automate operations from discovery to management. Sensitive data mo monitoring. Index and monitor sensitive data globally in seconds. I mean, this is the thing. This is it, man. Tanium protects organizations with other endpoint management and security providers have 
failed. With one platform, one platform, Tanium identifies where all your data is across your entire IT estate, patches every device you own in seconds because speed matters, and implements critical security controls all from a single pane of glass. Kevin Bush, the vice president of IT at Ring Power Corp., says, quote, Tanium brings visibility to one screen for our whole team. If you don't have that kind of visibility, you're not going to be able to sleep at night. With real-time data comes real-time impact. If you're ready to unite operations and security teams with a single source of truth and confidently protect your organization from cyber threats, well, it's time you met Tanium. To learn more, visit Tanium.com slash twit. Tanium, T-A-N-I-U-M dot com slash twit. Thank you, Tanium, for supporting the show. We really appreciate it. And you support us, too, when you go to that address. You know how important that is. Tanium.com slash twit, T-W-I-T. -I, I have in my hands the Gumix. Where awesome. did it, yeah, where did this come from? Burke brought this in. Did I have this all along and I just forgot? All of Manu's, uh, this is the book you were talking about where you kind of have the comics, but you explain what, yes. what, it, what you know, uh, the exegesis. There's actually two. <clears throat> I was there for so long that I needed two volumes. This is volume one. And the volume two is, is uh, more critical, let's say. <laughs> this is, I love your stuff. <laughs> did you, when did you start drawing? Um, when I was born. Little. You were a kid. Wow. It's funny because <laughs> yeah, wow. you dedicate this book to your parents. Stop. Prodigy. You your parents never understood what you did for a living, and now with this book, they really won't. <laughs> 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 Larry, this is uh, Sundar Pichai. Larry, you can tell the press that no money changed hands, but uh, say, do you like chocolate? Who's he talking to? This is when this Kit, was, Kat, uh, yeah. Kit Kat started appearing around, <clears throat> around the place. I think it was the, the first time that an Android release was called. You know, they were all called desserts, but this was an actual brand. Oh, so we talked said, about this. And they said no money changed hands. They didn't pay us for exactly. this. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So maybe they were paid in Kit Kats. Or so Kit Kat bars. Where, so there were a lot of Kit Kats around the uh, campus? Um, I can't remember. I think there was. There, there were, were Kit Kats. Everywhere. Not more than usual, I don't think. Do you carry an iPhone or an Android device? Android. I'm a I'm a very much an open source and yeah. Linux guy, so I try to Good. run as much open source stuff. Good. Uh, so you drew as a kid. Did you study art in school? I did not. Maybe I should have, because now I could be able to draw perspective and stuff like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, it but that's okay, because right? that means you're just a normal cartoonist. You do, <laughs> you, you do uh, caricatures really well. I mean, you really capture what people look like. It's you're good at portraits. So I try, so for, for, for these, either I cheat and I take a photo and then I, I use the oh, photo as a, as a, as a reference. template, ah. or I try to do it from scratch, which is a, a better caricature and try to capture the features, but that's way harder. And I, I think I'm going to need another lifetime of work. Okay. Everybody look at this. Who's that? But using everybody a reference knows who is that is. Fine. You know, who that is. It's obviously Steve Ballmer. 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 Oh, good. I'm glad. I was like, I was guessing that. I'm like, it's Ballmer, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen him in so long. Wow. I know, but that, well, this is from 2005. But there's Tim Cook. You can, yeah. Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Suck. Bezos. You know who these people are. Yeah. It's good. I think you do a good job. That's a really good mark. And then Larry the, Ellison. This is one, the Oracle this one guy? was, uh, yeah, that this one was uh, actually critical to others, but sort of flattering to Eric Schmidt, who was the CEO of Google at that time. So he he printed out a version of this and he placed it on his uh, uh, door of his office. At, at oh, well, yeah, that actually that if there was a, a fault in Eric Schmidt is that he was like a little too brutally honest. He <clears throat> he, he didn't he didn't play that game. So this is how tech companies apologize. Google, we screwed up. Sorry. Facebook, sorry, but we're still right. Oracle, <laughs> say but one word and we'll sue your ass off. <laughs> Blackberry. Like that. Mistake? What mistake? Apple, you're holding it wrong. Microsoft, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a picture of Palmer sticking his tongue out. <laughs> I think that's hysterical. I love it. And you're not using Illustrator to do this. You're doing this... Freehand? Freehand. Yes. That's yes. so cool. That's so fascinating. Yeah. Actually, but as much as I like your caricatures, I like your cartoon faces, though. 
They look like olive oil, Popeye and olive oil. I mean, you just, I just really like them. They're really cute. Did you read Tata as a kid? Yeah, of course. I, I grew up with all the Belgian and, and French things. Uh, Tata. Asterix. Is, is, yeah, Asterix is French. Um, my favorite is one guy called Franquin, who is the, uh, the author of a, a series that is not quite that well known in the U.S., but I think it's being translated these days. Um, it's the, it's, yeah, I just love his style and the way he, he, uh, portrays movements and face expressions. What are, what are his comics called? Do you... So the English version is being translated as, uh, Gomer Goof. It's a guy called Gomer who just goofs a lot. And this, uh, wow, that um, sounds the translation is pretty, it's pretty good, but it's, it's been around, it's very well known in, um, France and Belgium, I would, I would say but not quite that well known in the u.s but maybe the translation will help huh i'll have to look for it somebody a long time ago gave me a treasure trove of french comics in comicsology format and since my french is no good i never i never really did anything with it but i saved them i thought someday i'm going to be able to read this uh, Gosh, when I was learning French, someone gave me Baudelaire's The Flowers of Evil. <laughs> that was not an incentive to learn. <laughs> La Fleur de Mal. I'm like, dang, really? <laughs> a la recherche de le temps perdu. There's, uh, oh, there's even worse. They could have done, I think Baudelaire is, can be hard, but there's, there's uh, poets that are hard to understand, even for native French people. They could have done that to you oh we got those in english yeah. too I, i'm familiar yeah we yeah <laughs> yeah quite it, it, you know i still i think i still have my my copy of the the little prince le petit prince yes i'm like that's still running oh around. That that's is, much that's much better for learning french i can oh yeah that. it was great i can read that that's easy yeah well it's a kid's book for one thing yeah i think it might still be that's where i need me. to start yeah start there that that and my six french dictionaries uh -huh. other other news uh the other shoe dropped in the almost $70 billion acquisition of Activision by Microsoft uh, Federal Trade Commission Chairman Lena Khan. I guess she's just the chair. We don't say there's no gender to a chair uh, unless it's. If it's French, there is. Unless I was about French. to say it's French. Yeah. Uh, and then I was trying to remember the word for chair, but I've forgotten it. Chaise. Chaise. La chaise. Yes. And it's a chaise longue. Because it's long. Uh, <laughs> Lena Khan, who is la chaise of the Federal Trade Commission, has staked out an ambitious trust funding busting agenda on a case that may be difficult to win, says the New York Times. This, you know, Microsoft took great. Hold on. I, ha I have a, I have a pressing question. Is chairman the same in French? Is it really tied to the piece of furniture, or is l'homme du the chaise? L'homme de la there's chaise. No. No. no, there's no, there's no, there's no chair in that, in that title. No. Nope. <laughs> so what do, okay, sorry. This is something I'm like, I cannot pay any attention to anything until I find out if this is just a weird. Oh, uh, no. Thank you. Okay, Je sorry. suis l'homme de la chaise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in democracy. <laughs> Lena <laughs> Khan, go for it. No, what is it? it? How would you say chairman? It would be, it would be in, president. Yeah, I don't know why I it would president. Be, it president. Would be president. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So if like the chairman of the board would be le president or a secretary, do you have like home secretaries or like the secretary ministers, of the treasury ministers. or those minister, be, those that's it, ministers? ministers. Yeah. Okay. I have I met uh, Sarkozy by the way one one time. My wife and I, uh, Loïc Lemur, who did Le Web for many years in in Paris, mm, yeah. uh, when he invited us out about ten years ago, uh, we got to go to the uh, the Elysee Palace and uh, to meet. Uh, President Sarkozy. That was quite, he's about four foot tall. He's a tiny little man. It's quite an experience. That's all I took away from it, by the way. <laughs> were you, were you serving any food over there? No, yeah, I was, I was a, okay. a bus boy. You missed yeah. out. Yeah. No, it was good. Yeah. Loic knew everybody. Loic was like his right hand for, you know, technology or something. He knew everybody. Uh, now he's like on a, on a ayahuasca uh, retreat, a permanent <laughs> ayahuasca <laughs> retreat. I see him every now and then on Loic, do you? Yeah. Yeah. He's quite fascinating. I love Loic. That. What a great guy. What a great guy. Um, do you think he would still be on Twitter or would he move to ah, Mastodon? That's a good question. Uh, I'm not going to give another 
10 cents to Elon by going to Twitter.com. You almost had me. You, it was almost. this close. <laughs> nice, nicely done, <laughs> sir. Way to fight it. Close that tab. <laughs> I, You know, for a long time when I uh, left Twitter, I would go back just to read. I can't post, can't can't respond, can't do anything, just to like hands off read. And, and I found after a while, I'm not getting anything out of this. This isn't that great. I was still disappointed. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of brands and news organizations that were still there. But I just, it wasn't a conversation anymore. It was just, you know, it yeah, was, nude, it was news. It was a nude feed, news feed. Yeah. You know, I, Mr. Delahanty, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Delahanty mentioned how he would go through his feed and block the people that were mentioned in the ads that showed up in his feed. Yeah. And it, it cleaned up his experience. Yeah. So I tried that and holy crap is I don't I see done nothing that. anymore. Yeah. Nothing. And I mean, I was seeing the ads, the sponsored tweets every now and then. It wasn't really oh bothering God, me. Not stop. But dude, uh, I went through like Mr. Delahanty did and it, it was, it was a weekend of work, <laughs> you know, going in and manually blocking those Mr. accounts. When you say mentioned. it like that, it sounds like he's the vice principal at Twit. But Mr. Delahanty is not Mr. the Delahanty. vice principal. He is he's Patrick not Delahanty, our engineer. Patrick Delahanty, <laughs> the <laughs> one and only who we the vice all principal. love. <laughs> yeah, we love him. He's the honorary man of the chair. Yeah, he's the honorary <laughs> l'homme de la chaise. <laughs> the la, ch la chaise longue. Uh, <laughs> now I've completely lost the thread. Lena Khan. Sorry. Former, uh, current FTC chair. Uh, who got the job because she was going to bust a big tech. I mean, let's face it, that mm -hmm. was that was the mandate, right? And her big issue is monopsony, which is not monopoly. Monopoly is when you control all the customers. Monops monopsony is the opposite. When you're the only place you can go to buy something, Amazon is becoming a monopsony, for instance. And for some, uh, the issue with monopsony, at least according to a letter she wrote that has just been released by Elizabeth Warren uh, when this uh, acquisition was announced. Warren, uh, Senator Warren and a few other senators wrote a letter to Lena Khan uh, saying, you got to do something about this. You can't allow this Microsoft merger to happen. And uh, I thought Lena Khan's response was kind of interesting. Let me see if I can uh, find it because it just, it just came out and I read it to uh, Paul. Uh, Microsoft, Warren... Con, she was talking about monopsony, but particularly in regard to labor markets. Uh, here it is. Responding to Senator Warren's uh, letter. Actually, this was back in uh, June. But uh, uh, I share your concern, Con wrote, that monopsony, and you're going to have to explain this all, uh, so pay attention, Stacy. I share your concern that monopsony <laughs> laws... <laughs> I thought I should warn her before we have the pop quiz. Good. Right? That was good. Yeah, pop that was quiz good. coming up. Glad you're not asking me. <laughs> I was pondering going for waffles during this. No, bit, no. I share your concern that monopsony power in labor markets may enable firms to harm workers in a host of ways, including through undermining their rights and dignity. Although antitrust law in recent dec decades has generally neglected monopsony concerns and harms to workers, I strongly believe that merger investigations must sc scrutinize the impact on labor markets. G given that Activision disclosed th the filing, uh, I am able to confirm that we are investigating the proposed merger. This is back in June. But why did she bring this thing up about labor markets? I'm not sure why Microsoft Act was... The only threat that this poses is to Sony that Microsoft might pull back some games from Sony's PlayStation 5. Microsoft's already assured Sony that that wouldn't happen. They said, we'll sign an agreement that won't happen for 10 years. They said they offered a consent decree to the FTC. They said, we would be glad to sign a consent decree that would forbid it forever. And still, the FTC said no. They're apparently not worried about this, which seems to be the only potential problem with this merger, but about labor markets? So this is interesting, and this is probably going to be an overstep. This might be the point where Lena goes too far. Um, but the point behind it is they have been looking, Lena, Lena Khan's focus on this is if a company gets big enough, how does it hurt all of the players in the ecosystem? Right. Not just so other companies, yeah. consumers. Not just other consumers, 
suppliers. I mean, they've they've the FTC's put out some notices around suppliers. So with labor, my hunch is because Activision had such remember the like sex was it were they the ones having sex in stairwells? I can't remember. Yeah, the point they is were horrible, they've had such horrible. A, yeah, they, they had, had a Bill really Cosby room at their hospitality. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. There was there was I mean there was actual harassment and possibly assault there yeah. and then retaliation against workers and the idea being that if a company is too big they become too powerful there's no place else for a, a, a game designer to work is i think the mental gymnastics that they're doing i don't think that's a compelling argument i don't know where they stand on ndas in the gaming industry right now i know some states allow it and some don't but that has historically been their argument it's too big of a place there's not enough other options for insert injured party here and because activision was so crappy this may be i guess a way to to really highlight that i don't really know i really this is a puzzling argument microsoft just recently came out with an investigation a long long delayed investigation of the behavior of its own executives including bill gates included concluded it hadn't been handled properly that uh hr had ignored complaints Uh, Microsoft has sim- not maybe as as egregious, but similar problems with harassment and discrimination. Yeah, and I mean, Bill Gates famously dated his employees, he um, married his employee. <laughs> as a matter of fact, yeah. and then continued to date his employees, and then continued to that's date his employees. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, men behaving badly in positions of power is what not a, shock. a new story. I, I know. I, I'm sorry for bringing things back to Twitter, but I think Musk may have been surprised when half the people he didn't lay off, many of them left, and he was maybe surprised that they had other companies to work for. I think because he was trained by the the Tesla and the SpaceX experiences where people didn't have that many other choices, that he thought people would stay longer because they didn't really quite have that many other choices. I don't know how much well, that's the monopsony, right? It does. Uh, yeah. I mean, and te- I mean, Tesla probably does to some degree. Although you can go to Apple. In fact, there is this revolving door between Tesla and Apple. <clears throat> but maybe SpaceX. There's only a handful of other companies. You wouldn't want any one of those to become too powerful because then employees would have no choice, which means they couldn't negotiate better salaries. There's all sorts of problems, and that's one thing the FTC is apparently very concerned about. Although now, thank you, Scooter X. He just sent me the FTC uh, press release. Uh, on the prosecution, uh, in which they say Activision currently has a strategy of offering its games on many devices, regardless of producer. But that could change if the deal is allowed to proceed with control over Activision's blockbuster franchises. There's a word you don't hear a lot in FTC uh, press release, blockbuster. (laughs) Microsoft would have both the means and the motive to harm competition by manipulating Activision's prices, degrading... See, it's more than just exclusives degrading Activision's game quality. Why they would do that, I don't know. They own the company. Don't they want to make money? Or player experience, oh, on rival consoles. So it looks right. best on Xbox. Okay. Right. Uh, changing the terms and timing of access to Activision's content or withholding content from competitors entirely, <clears throat> resulting in harm to consider. Well, this has nothing consumers. about labor in it. This okay, has nothing. So-, so maybe Lena wasn't paying attention when she responded to Senator Warren and just said, send, send, it, send it this. It's, it's in my uh, thesis. <clears throat> It's in my dissertation. Just send it, send it, send it that. Um, this makes sense. This does make sense. The yeah. for Microsoft, this is potentially, regardless of the outcome, the kiss of death to this deal because it could delay it significantly. For instance, the next step is to go before an administrative law judge. That's how this works. That won't be till August 2023. Uh, if if they decide to appeal that, or it goes badly for them, or they can't make a, an agreement, so that best you're going to get this is delaying it by eight months. Uh, at worst, it could go on for years because you could then appeal to go to the, go to the federal court and then go up the appeals chain. Uh, and that would be also kill the deal. So whether the deal gets killed by the FTC or just delayed to the point where it's, it's moot, uh, this is bad news for that acquisition. So uh, I when, when I talked to Paul, and I think I agree with him, it was hard to find anything really detrimental to having Microsoft acquire Activision. As they pointed out, they still only makes them the number three game company in the world. Um, anyway. And it doesn't sound like Microsoft is really trying to sell consoles anymore. It feels right. like they're going moving away from the exclusivity model and they're trying to make people 
pay for gaming as a service instead. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't make much sense to harm the experience on other platforms. I, exactly. Exactly right. <laughs> um, you're going to make your money on uh, Call of Duty. You don't want to limit it to Xbox. You want to make it uh, available everywhere and a great experience everywhere because you'll sell more copies. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, the decision has been made on the word of the year. We had three choices. <laughs> and, and before you look up what the word of the year is, I want to know what you think. The one choice, I'll tell you my personal choice, was this is from the Oxford English Dictionary. My personal choice, metaverse, word of the year. Makes uh, sense. Yeah. No. No? The other one was a hashtag, which I don't think should ever be a word of the year. I, <laughs> I stand with, hashtag I stand with. No. That's, no. that's not very good. Okay. So the only other choice is the one that actually won. With a 93% majority of the public vote, goblin mode. Yes. <laughs> but that's not a, that's two words. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's a phrase. Come on, people. Come on, I, people. I, I would have voted for Ronogram. Ronogram. Ron Oh, Ron, Ron was it Rontogram or what was oh, the new oh, we were talking about that. The uh, yeah, the new uh, the new designations what? for after a petabyte and yada byte, you need oh, something right. new. It's gonna be a, there's yeah. going to be a uh, not a Bronto byte or a Hellabyte, which is what Google wanted. <laughs> yeah, we said Hellabyte. I remember that. Episode. I remember Bronto byte being the thing way back in the day. But okay, uh, the, there's actually a problem because you have to use an unused letter of the alphabet. And uh, I, so, the oh. the and by the way, I think they met in the in Versailles to decide this, didn't they? We talked about it on the show. Yeah, the French have a whole state. They used to have the original kilogram. They they've got that, some sort of all, it all global comes down standard to setting. Yeah. Thing. So thanks for turning us in that direction once again, man. <laughs> uh, the Rana, the Rana bite, and the Quetta bite. Or the new, and we did. We talked about it last week, but uh, I agree that would have been a much better. Uh, even Hellabite would have been better Hellabite. than Goblin. No, you're mode. not going to get that until we start talking about it on yeah, the regular, yeah. and that's going to be several. But so this was my problem. Maybe I'm not a touch, but I don't remember hearing Goblin mode. A lot. Goblin mode is a TikTok mode? thing. Okay, oh. it's like you hanging out in your house, eating French fries, doing whatever it takes to stay like healthy and normal and sane. Is that close? <clears throat> Really? Wait, wait yeah. until the, yeah. the word of the year gets decided in Versailles. It will be a very different choice. <laughs> it will be. Told the French in their words of the year. There will be no English in it. <laughs> it will be le, le président de la chaise de la borde. Uh, previous words last year was vax, V-A-X. That makes sense. Yeah, I that guess. That makes sense for, for the year. Yeah. Climate emergency for nine, 2019. 2013 uh, was selfie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But goblin mode. So what is goblin mode, Stacy? No, I, I've never I heard of this. I just told you, man. What? It's where you... <laughs> <laughs> you weren't listening. You, all you said was it was a TikTok like... thing. And then I kept talking. Now I know why you interrupt me. After two words, you just stopped I'm bored, listening. I'm I bored. I'm having a little champagne and Mando Cornette's honor. And I don't know. Did you say goblin mode is like when you wake up at 2 a.m. and shuffle into the kitchen wearing nothing but a long T-shirt to wear... Make a weird snack like melted cheese on saltines? Is that, that what you, you did said? not say? Did you I didn't say that. I just said it's where you like you sit down and you eat weird stuff and you too just, much like yeah, yeah, and yeah. you do things in the name of self care or in the name of staying sane. It's not even self care. It's like bad for you self care. So you're oh, okay. you're a little goblin hanging out doing gross things. Yeah, you you did the, the ideas. you did the golem voice when you said goblin mode. So <laughs> that's what you were thinking. That's my Yoda voice. Oh, yeah. That's Yoda, yeah. Yeah. Well, how does Goblin? <laughs> Thanks, man. Gollum. Yeah. Anyway, my precious. Goblin, uh, go my precious. Wait, Gollum is my precious. precious. Yes. My yes. precious. Yes. Uh, I had never heard Goblin mode. Uh, and apparently, even when Stacy described it, I still hadn't heard it. So, <laughs> but it is I now. live it's, in uh, Goblin mode <clears throat> all the time. Maybe that's it sounds Unless like I'm on the show. Life, right? It might yeah. be honoring honoring the behavior as opposed to the, the word it for it. This is so well. And a lot of people talk about doing this, doing goblin mode. Yeah, like it, I mean, it's very much a TikTok thing, and there's even like goblin core, you know, like norm core and cottage yeah. core and all the cores. Um, 
but yeah, it's it, it's very much a reaction to the pandemic, and okay. So I can see. I mean, who hasn't? I mean, what was it? Oh, Liz Lemon and her night cheese working on the night cheese. Night cheese. You know, and she would she would eat her night cheese so like, this is like where she just felt bad. I feel like I Manu, we need so disconnected. We need an Academy <laughs> Francaise to keep control of the language. Because what happens, and this is what the Academy Francaise protects, is you get trendy. And Casper Grathwall, who's the president of Oxford Languages, said that this exactly, this has been demonstrated, he says, it's a relief to acknowledge we're not always the idealized curated selves we are encouraged to present on our Instagram and TikTok feeds. Goblin mode resonates with all of us who are feeling a little overwhelmed at this point. This has been demonstrated by the dramatic rise and fall of platforms like Be Real. See, this is a problem. You get too trendy. Wait, no, Be Real still a real thing. Is it? Is it a real deal still, or is it like? I still, yeah. use, I still use you it. You do? So this, hey, you're a photographer. The, you don't count. Maybe the trendy no, no, is. But I don't use it as a photography platform. <clears throat> no, that's the, it's the opposite. Me. It's the yeah, opposite. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's totally, and it is a very, 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 very small circle of folks mm. there that I enjoy checking in with every day. What, it, Manu, it might what be were that being, being too trendy and going through the fashion too much might be might be bad. But I think if you go with the Académie Française, you swing the pendulum the other way, way too far. <laughs> you can't say le weekend or sweater. <laughs> oh, or l'ordinateur instead of yeah. computer. L'ordinateur. Good luck. I still remember that. And I was like, what? No. Was that? Okay. I wonder if that was the Académie Française that made that happen. Probably. I think Fran they, they just come up with stuff and yeah. you know. I don't, I don't play know. you know what you have a beautiful language like French. You don't want to add words like le weekend. That's terrible. Le t shirt. Le big Mac. They do jogging. <laughs> well the, the issue is what do you replace it with? And then if they if they come the up with some long expression to replace weekends, then nobody's gonna use that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh I stand with came in third. Hashtag I stand with and metaverse came in second. What metaverse just feels too commercial. Yeah. yeah, but it's been around since 92 before it, Facebook care, ruined it, it. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Facebook may have ruined it, sir, but Facebook definitely put it top of mind for yeah. normal folks. Yeah, yeah that's why it was a audience. word of the year. It's not you know? because everyone suddenly rushed out and read Neil Stevenson's no, book. That's probably true. Yeah, that's probably true. Gosh. What was that book called that we read? Terminal something? Terminal Shock. Terminal, Terminal Shock, Shock, Shock was so good. Shock. Or Termination Shock was so you, good. Did Let you me go like read it? Snow Crash. Did you? Yeah, I right. hated it. No, you hated it. So much. You hated it. <laughs> so that, as a response, I had to hate a long way to a small, angry planet. And now- <laughs> And you didn't even show up for the- I couldn't be bothered. There was such a he horrible- was out. So now- Harsh. Now it's going to come down to the final, the third and final match- uh, the book is Project Hail Mary. Who could not like Project Hail oh, Mary? Oh, man, such a good book. I have some issues with it, and we'll talk about oh, it on January. Oh, them's fighting words. January 12th. I read that. Loved it. Did you love it? Yeah, me too. Mano, come by our uh, book club. You That's have to come to the yeah, book club, sir. Yeah, yeah, I would love to. I actually listen to it, which is, I assume, what Leo does as well. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't read anything anymore. <laughs> I, I can't. I, I don't think he does. So you do audiobooks. Nice. I yeah, like that. Yeah. Another reason to like you. What are you reading the these only days? Way I do it. What are you reading I'm these sorry? days? What are you reading these days, Mano? Oh, um, let me see. What am I reading? I'm listening to a bunch of lectures. Things like, um, you know, this uh, this company that used to be called the Teaching Company, yeah, yeah. and then it was called the, the Great, Great courses. courses. Yeah, I have a lot you know, of their it's stuff. Something like I love that. Yeah, yeah, I love them too. Uh, if only they would stop changing their name every two years. <laughs> they have the best. <laughs> um, and I, uh, this is the one I only one I really listened to uh, all the way through and loved. A be the best thing, a best uh, uh, education in classical music. Um, let me see if I can find it because it really it was really fantastic. But I have a, quite a few of those. Had a there's a lot of uh, Robert Greenberg. Is that the yeah? I love Robert Greenberg. This this one is uh, exactly Robert Greenberg. Yeah. How to listen to and understand great music, third edition. Really good. He plays the music. And then, uh, and then you get in, you, you know, it helps you understand it. I just really loved this. Yeah. So yeah, that's he has great. a, he has a series on Mozart, which is, Oh, really good. I have to listen to that. He's at UC Berkeley or no, he's at San Francisco performances. 
Um, yeah, I love those great courses. I did. There's uh, John John McWhorter that we uh, talk talk about all the time. The guy who did, I like, Mister McWhorter. Yeah, he he really did uh, a couple of really good books. Talking back, talking black. Um, the nine nine like what was it the nine words of the naughty nine words naughty or something nine. like that. He something also has was, a great podcast. So he's got a linguistics uh, course, which uh, I really enjoyed understanding linguistics on uh, the great courses. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we got into a great courses ad. Is it time for another <laughs> ad? Or? It is. Wait, it's time to wrap it up and go have a, lo a lawful waffle. Good news. Waffle. The waffle <laughs> is now set free. It's legal again. Wouldn't that be terrible if we had like a, a waffle prohibition, Stacey, like the government decided, you know, to make a constitutional amendment saying waffles are illegal and people would have to have bathtub waffles? The horror. Um, actually, bathtub waffles are delicious <laughs> because you're in the bathtub eating waffles. But... But yes, if we had, if we had I like whole. I respect your game, man. I respect your game, Miss. <laughs> what, what happens if you're if you're clumsy and you you let the soggy, waffle fall? A soggy. Uh, then waffle. yeah, I don't recommend eating that waffle, but you just fish it right out, it's toss a, it out. Yeah, that's know, the good thing about waffles. Off. Unlike a pancake, wow. which might come apart, the waffle's crust preserves its integrity even when <clears throat> immersed in water. I was, uh, as a kid, I liked to eat my cereal breakfast in my bath, very strange, so the inevitable happened one day and had Cheerios in my bath. <laughs> <laughs> so you were actually speaking with knowledge uh, of the uh, situation. That's, that's good. If you'd been eating oatmeal, it would have been like a spa treatment because oatmeal was <laughs> recommended to go Cheerios in your bath. Cheerios are made of oats. They're, that's really good. Yeah. It's like a vino. Only Cheerios instead. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by, I don't know how we got there. This has been a very uh, interesting episode. Not Nabisco. No. <laughs> this episode of This Week in Google brought to you by Cashfly. I mean, literally brought to you by Cashfly, our content delivery network. The whole world is moving and digital traffic patterns are spiking all over the place, which is great, but it's not so good for the uh, viewers. They don't want to hang around for videos that buffer. And shoppers hate carts. They'll abandon them on e-commerce sites that are slow. I've done it all the time. See it spinning? You don't want me to buy this? Hey, well, so what? There you go. I can buy. Gamers leave bad reviews when latency is high? Well, yeah. Well, with cash fly, you don't have to worry about those fluctuations. Consumers expect these, day these days. We forget that we're on the Internet. We just expect a flawless experience when engaging with content. Any device, anytime, anywhere in the world. Well, that's why you need Cashfly, a leader in CDN technology. Since 2002, they're in their 20th year now. And they hold the track record for high-performing, ultra-reliable content delivery over the last two decades. They pioneered the use of TCP Anycast, an innovation that CDNs continue to build on. Quality of experience is the metric you should be paying attention to. When you're serving content simultaneously to a large and distributed audience on a global scale. But with Cashfly, your delivery stack can be your secret weapon for quality of experience. You get ultra-low latency video streaming that delivers video to more than a million concurrent users. You get lightning-fast gaming, which delivers downloads faster with zero lag glitches, no outages, mobile content optimization that offers automatic and simple image optimization so your site loads faster on any device. Multiple CDNs give you redundancy and failover. You can actually intelligently balance your traffic across multiple providers, which gives you the shortest route and mitigates against performance glitches. Plus, you'll never pay for service overlap again. Get flexible month-to-month -month billing for as long as you need it and discounts for fixed terms once you're happy. Design your own contract when you switch to Cashfly. Look at all the companies who use Cashfly, all the biggest, bestest companies, including, I might add, Twit. So how do we know this? Because we've been using Cashfly for over 10 years. I think it's been more like 15 now. It's been a long time. And I wouldn't have it any other way with more than 3,500 clients in over 80 countries. Organizations like Twit consistently choose Cashfly for scalability, reliability, and unrivaled performance. Cashfly is the only CDN built for throughput, delivering rich media content up to 10 times faster than traditional delivery methods and 30% faster than other major CDNs. Learn how you can get your first month free at cashfly.com. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y. Cashfly.com. Thank you, Cashfly, for supporting uh, 
this week in Google. I did want to mention uh, Club Twit. That's uh, You have to be a Club Twit member to participate in Stacy's Book Club. Project Hail Mary, the book, on July, uh, January 12th. Tomorrow, our dear Glenn Fleischman will be doing a fireside chat. He's just back from his trip around Eastern Europe, and he has lots of tales to tell. 9 a.m., you're going to do that interview, Ant, tomorrow morning, yes? Yes, sir. How fun. 9 a.m. Pacific time. But, of course, the time zone shows in our Discord applicable to your time zone. Yeah. Uh, if you check it out there. Yeah, mine says 9 a.m. because I'm in Pacific time. Uh, inside Twit with uh, Lisa and me, um, January 19th. We'll be talking about the situation at Twit. Win2 Dow's doing a fireside chat with you, Ant, on uh, February 9th. So some good ones. Queen uh, Code Monkey. Queen Code Monkey, <laughs> host of All About Android. If you are not yet a member of Club Twit, let me give you the elevator pitch. Seven bucks a month, you get ad-free versions of all the shows, you get access to the Discord, you get the Twit Plus feed with shows you might not even get if you don't join the club, like our hands-on Macintosh show with Micah Sargent, hands-on Windows with Paul Therott, the Untitled Linux show with J uh, Jonathan Bennett, uh, the Giz Fizz with Dick T. Bartolo. We get a lot of good stuff in there for seven bucks, I think. It's a really worthwhile thing. And now... Cartoons by Manu Cornette. <laughs> just, just head on in to uh, twit.tv slash club twit and uh, join today. We would love, love to have you. <laughs> Do not, you will not get Rickrolled. Don't worry. <laughs> Pay no attention to that. And, and has in response to your waffle bath, he says a shower beer. You don't take yeah, yeah, beer yeah. You have not lived until you had a beer or two in I the shower. I guess after man. a ball game, maybe. Yeah, that would make <clears throat> sense, maybe. Uh, Wait, does that mean you, does that you, mean you cut drink the grass? a beer? You drink, oh. you drink in the shower, right? Not, you or don't shower, you don't with, shower beer. with the beer. No, you drink with the beer. Okay. Actually, <laughs> beer is really He's good for your hair. Um, really? Several You're hair masks involved beer. <laughs> um, beer sorry, in yeah. your hair. <laughs> and, and you know, you smell so good. Afterwards. You wash it out afterwards. You, you create a hair mask so using good. beer. Eat your heart out, Herbal Essence. <laughs> now, <laughs> I did have an issue. I Aunt, you put in a story, and, and we've talked about this before. It's not a democracy. I was tempted, though. Students rebel against heat-seeking crotch monitor surveillance devices. <laughs> but then I didn't want to really... I how I came across I, that. I didn't really want to click the link, so... No, go ahead. It's a hack a day. It's a hack a day. Story. How bad could it be? Well, we've talked about surveillance in the past, um, especially in schools with having cameras up. And there's always been the argument about the kids being watched. Oh, yeah. Day and their it's invasion of privacy. And, yeah. You know, but at the same time, I, I could see a use for it, especially with all of these ridiculous uh, mass shootings happening. Um, we could reference and see where people are and things like that oh i have big opinions and thoughts on that and social justice but we don't need to talk about that because waffles right <laughs> true got it i but wasn't even also, bring up this, this is, story <laughs> but then there's but this, you did this story. you did bring it up this story they're, they're not using cameras they're using these tiny little sensors Heat under sensors. the desk yeah. that points it's occupancy at sensors the, the crotch. Well, and, that's like, just because really? that's what's under the desk. It could point at something else, but it's just what's there. Yeah. They're, not, they're PIR sensors. They're not really, I mean, it's just more, that's a heat seeking. It's, this headline. It's I a little, it. it's not heat seeking. It's just saying there's a warm body here. Although, yeah. we've this also is, talked this about is, this story. I really this need the boxing glove now. This is, um, <laughs> I didn't bring it up. It now. was Ed's story. Punch him, punch him. <laughs> I didn't know. We brought this up when it happened. Corey Doctorow wrote about it. He was one of the people oh, who brought okay, it up. Okay, it was okay, universities. Right. They deployed this. The irony was they deployed it against a group of students, graduate students, who wrote about invasions of pirate privacy and digital surveillance. So when they found mm -hmm. these things, they were like, ah, WTF. Whoops. And, okay, moving right along. Your is thing of the to week. Show off our toys? Yes, show your toy. <laughs> <clears throat> What? I have a number. No. You have a number. Yeah, oh. he's he's going to join right in. Forget this, this Jeff I just want to give you a big old hug. We got to so get rid awesome. of Jeff and just bring in Mano every week. <laughs> he's got a number and everything. Go ahead, Stacey. Thing of the week first. 
It's a hub. What is a hub? I thought it was a paddle. What is it? Yeah. All right. This is like, I literally have four little white hubs, but this one is round and it's made by Ikea. Oh, and this is the Bitty Hitta. Bitty Hitta. What is the Bitty Hitta hub? Dear We Hira. It looks like Dear Gira, Dirigera, Dirigera. It looks like Dirigera, but if you are Swedish, you say Dirigera or dear something hira. along those lines. It's the Dirigera hub for smart products. There you go. Yes. For smart products. Yes. Um, this is from IKEA, and this replaces their trad trad free great gateway. Um, and you know, it's so funny because I remember testing. IKEA started doing Hue lights, and I thought, well, that's weird. They do a lot of home automation stuff, don't they? They have a whole home automation business. And what's interesting about it is they really take, I guess, the IKEA approach to it. So what's interesting to me is they have lights, they have air purifiers, they have smart plugs, they have blinds, um, they have this hub to control it. And in a few weeks, or actually, sorry, not in a few weeks, at some point in the next few months, it will be updated to matter, but it will not be a controller, it will be a bridge. So uh, that means you'll be able to control You'll be able to tell your IKEA device using Matter what those IKEA devices to do, but you won't be able to control the IKEA light bulbs, for example, directly. Is but, that a good thing or a bad thing? Because I, I, I still get confused on the IoT protocol. Well, I think it's probably a no. good thing because you what you want is some central control that control all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, well, right? we'll talk about this. You know what? Talk to me. We should do Stacy Talks About Matter at some point in time. I would time love next week. Are you going to be here next week? No, 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 no. No, we're going to do, no, no. We're going to do it in like six months when we yes, have actually played with Matter. Because okay. right now, we don't it's know. all coming out. Oh, it's okay. all coming out. Okay. I mean, we could talk about like what we think is going to happen, but you know how I hate that. I'm like speculation. Right. Speculation. Okay. Anyway, this hub, $69.99. It um, replaces trad free. If you have the old trad free system, this you can update your trad free stuff right to this very easily within the new app, not even opening the old app. So that's nice. Um, it works fine. Um, I don't know what to say. I've got so many freaking hubs now. I don't even care. But if you like the, I don't think the IKEA home interface is all that because I kind of feel like I'm a power user now. But if you're like just a normal human being, this actually is kind of a nice interface with you and they're going to add more features over time. Um, so I don't know. Do y'all have questions about it? Nope. No. Cool. You, you answered mine. $69.99 at Kia. Uh, and do you have to use IKEA stuff with it or is it a standard? Uh, you do have to use the IKEA lines it, it's designed to control mm -hmm. and manage stuff. the ikea stuff okay. it does support zigbee so if you oh. have zigbee bulbs like you can add those if it's the right version of Zigby, zigbee so yeah this is why home automation is such a nightmare matters <laughs> gonna again six months for now let's we'll talk see. six months right. we're gonna do a matter thing and see if it succeeded the dear hira is matter compatible yes it's matter compatible but again it will be a bridge not a controller not a controller so it's a link it's not something that can actually be a brain how's that does it do goblin mode and it lives in goblin mode all right at That's night all I care it, about. it skulks about eating cheese <laughs> manu has a number but it's a little different kind of number manu what do you got yeah it's not really a number that's in the news so i don't know if it counts but the, the the guess is I'm going to ask you how many elements, as in, you know, elements like carbon or yeah. oxygen, yeah. like a uh, table, how many elements do you think are in an iPhone or a modern oh, smartphone? Oh, what an interesting question. Wow. So what are they, 108 elements in the table of elements, something like that, 100 something? <clears throat> they keep adding new might be more, fake yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're not, not fake. They're just, Un thank they you. Don't, that, they don't, <laughs> it's like they fall apart. Yeah. They last like half a millisecond. So we know there's, for instance, aluminum. We know there's uh, glass is silicone or silicon rather. Uh, there's going to be gold. There's gold. There's, be there's AU, copper. CU. Um, oh my God. We're just uh, 27. Does plastic, okay. is plastic an element, Manu? On this uh, what is it? Nine. No, it's an no. oil. It's a petrochemical. So yeah. nine, 27. So carbon. <laughs> Leo, what do you think? So you, Stacy, you said 27? Yeah, there's a lot of weird, uh, there's a lot of weird stuff in electronics. You've been listening to man. There's mercury. Yeah. 
Uh, uh-uh. Mercury. I forgot about Mercury. Lead. Oh, uh, yeah. PB. Um, okay, maybe not. You, Make it 13. 13? 13. Oh, I think 18. Okay. The, so the number comes from a physics lecture from a couple of years ago, so it might be more by now. But it I was love you, 63. Manu. Whoa! Wow. 63! Wow. Like a, a th- more, that, like half the table of elements. Wow. That's fascinating. That is amazing. Wow. And actually, here's a here's a, a more recent one. Wisegeek.com from uh, November 30th. It says 75 of the 118 elements. Aluminum is most dominant, comprising 24%, but there are s- as many as 118 elements. So it's, it has gone up. Wow. Yttrium, terbium, europium, gandolinium. You Those are just the screen. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, because, like, material science is what makes, like, gorilla glass yeah. possible, if you think about it. Uh, Gold, okay. tin, yeah. and tantalum. And, like, we just talked about a new infrared sensor, for example, and the reason why it's so much more powerful than other IR sensors is it's because it's built on antimony. And I'm like, holy cow. All right, sure. That's really, so, uh, that's a great number. Thank you, Anna. Good number. The, the story on antimony is that it's uh, it was discovered because it, it killed a bunch of monks who were doing research on it, and they discovered it, so they, they called it the anti-monk. Oh my oh, God, wow. that's the name. Yes. Oh. Wait, Manu, do you have a do you have the periodic table of the elements flashcards too? <laughs> I do not, but that sounds interesting. There's a great, it's a good gift idea for, uh, it's beautiful. Hold on. I'm going to tell y'all because Stacy loves gifts ideas. Do y'all really want to know this problem? Yeah, no, that'd be a good thing. I do. Yeah. I'm, I'm, also, I'm also writing comics about like physics popularization. So that's why. I'm oh, you're, you're pulling a random you get out of this gosh. coding business. There's no future in that. Be a cartoonist. <laughs> you're really no good. I think this is. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> oh, sorry. I would no, if I book? didn't have any bills to pay. Well, those those could be yeah. a pain. So do you get these on Amazon? You can buy them on Amazon. And the book is called The Elements. And then if you look up the Oh, I love book, that book. That next, is a fantastic yeah. book. In so fact, it was one of the first. Cards. This was one of the first iPad apps because it was so big and beautiful. And this is the uh, $25, $26 for the uh, the Elements flashcards. Get Did the book too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have we have that book, and we have something else. But the cards are super fun. And my child, when they were doing chemistry, we, I, I had an excuse to buy them. We also, oh yeah, we have molecules, and that was super fun too. Yeah, Theodore. We did not ever graduate. No nope. reactions. Never graduated. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Aunt Pruitt. What's your pick of the week? Uh. First one, this one was sent to me on Twitter, and I can't remember who it was that sent it, but I apologize for not remembering. And it says, have I been trained regarding AI? You know, we've been talking about stable diffusion and uh, how those uh, systems are trained based on what's seen out there online. And with this service, you can put in a URL to an image or upload an image to see if it was if it had been used, allegedly. For training, and I found it interesting because um, some of my prints that I've had in the past showed up in some of the stuff that was being used to train. So when you go to the website have I been trained dot com, you put in whatever it is you want to search for, and it'll just give you a dump of everything that was put, that it that was used to train the AI that's out there. Hmm. I don't know if it's particularly stable diffusion. And um, like if you use that link that I put on line 111, um, you can scroll down and you'll see a lot of the nature scenes and stuff like that. And I saw at least two of the images that I had out there. Excuse me. That's what I put in to see if it would find it. It didn't find that one. But what it did find was some of my other images Ah. that I used to have out there available for print. Yeah. Well, you know, these are on like, pub- in public, right? I mean, I can see it. So yeah, th- they I just scraped just everything that every web page ever and just scraped them yep. all. And wow. and they they do give you an option to put in some type of opt out. But I just thought it was fascinating to see this the service out there, especially when you're dealing with people's faces. 
Uh, I, p- I uploaded a, a headshot of myself just to see what would happen. Of course, nobody's really going to use me, but it was neat to see how it put up other black men, bald head and certain lighting and all of that stuff is pretty cool. And next, I want to give a shout out to Miss Sheila Johnson. She's the first black female billionaire here recently. She co-founded BET way back in the days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But she's also um, a uh, like part owner in the major teams there in D.C. You have the Caps for the NHL, uh, the Mystics for the WNBA, as well as the, um, the, the, the men's NBA basketball team over there. And she's cross that threshold of a billion dollars net worth and just want to give her her flowers. And she's not buying Twitter. (laughs) Mm. She's not. Mm -mm. (laughs) She's Mm -mm. not. And don't forget Ant's Prince, antpruitt.com slash Prince. Uh, So many beautiful images, including the Whiskey River image we just showed. Uh, Just some great stuff. Yeah. And of course, Ant underscore Pruitt on Instagram and Twitter. Yep, yep. Stacy is Giga Stacy on Twitter. I should save this really uh, for uh, Jeff's return because you know how he loves his blob opera. He loves. Oh yeah, I saw your story. Oh. He loves the blob opera <laughs> and the blob opera is back, baby. Yeah, actually, let's save it. Should I save it? Let's save it. I have. I tell you what, I have two. I'll do. I'll save one and I'll do the Beethoven one. Because this is, I've already showed, this is kind of cool. It says, this is at uh, Google's Arts and Culture. Uh, It says, rhythms are everywhere. uh, Blah, 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 blah. So, tap several times in your space bar to create a rhythm. rhythm. You'll have four seconds to record your beats. And then, it will find a Beethoven, a work of Beethoven that will match your rhythm. So, let's see. Dut, dut. Dut, 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 dut. Bop, bop, bop. That's a crazy rhythm. Wow, that's pretty good. Oh, my that's goodness. That's the Sonata number 12 in A-flat major, op 20, uh, opus 26, two scherzo allegro molto. So you can get the whole thing if you want to. Wow. That's kind of amazing, huh? Shall I do a new rhythm? Let's do. Listen to Stacy yeah. typing. This is the Stacy rhythm. <laughs> there is no sonata that matches the Stacy rhythm. Oh yes, there is. Wait a minute. Play it. It's over. Oh. <laughs> okay, here we go. The whole thing, ladies and gentlemen. That would be a punt. This is Stacy typing sonata. That fits. That's nice. Isn't that great? If you like Beethoven, That's nice. which I do, and you love piano sonatas, uh, you can tap out any rhythm, and and you will get a sonata. Now, we'll save the blob opera for uh, the blobs are back, baby, for next week. Jeff Jarvis will return. Mr. Manu Cornett, so great to have you on. Uh, your website, ma.nu. Perfect. Nice and short. Do you sell the uh, book Gumix? Can I buy that somewhere? It's on Amazon, yes. Amazon. There's two volumes, so if you want to pick one, the, the later one is probably more um, uh, critical. Get so them maybe. both. Get them both. <laughs> Get them both. Love it. Satya Nadella says, impossible to ignore. <laughs> Did he really say that? <laughs> he, he did. He used the, uh, the org chart thing. As, ah. uh, he, mentioned it on, on the first page of his book about uh, oh. wanting to change the culture. I you're think, you're kidding. Wow. Well, I have my own, my very <clears throat> own copy. You'll find it. Keep going. It's there somewhere. There it is. I have my very <laughs> own copy and I've cherished this for 10 years and I'm so glad to meet the guy who made it. Thank you, Mano, for uh, joining us. I really... You know how engineers are measured on how much impact they do. So my boss at Google said I had a lot of impact, but just on the wrong company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't code. We couldn't monetize it. That's the problem. That's all. They just couldn't monetize it. Really, They nice could to- monetize it if they sold cartoons. <laughs> I know. Maybe they should. It might be better than some of the other things they did. Uh, possibly. Do you think you would go back to work at Google, Mano? <clears throat> um, undecided. Yeah. Probably not, but yeah. we never know. You, you, yeah. I, this is a chance to sit back, reflect, enjoy the holidays. 
watch, maybe a startup. Watch the dumpster fire over <clears throat> your former place of employ. It must be with some sadness. <clears throat> Not, not only you watch, but comments with drawings. I'm yeah. having lots of fun doing That's that. a good outlet, isn't it? And those uh, those Twitter comics are all online at Twit... What is it? Twittoons? <clears throat> yes. And all the Google ones are also online. So I'm, I'm not really going to... <laughs> good job at selling my book, but you can sell... <laughs> you can get all of them for free online. No, oh, buy the freaking book. I'm not going to tell you the URL for that. Good but maybe when he does a book for Twitoon, I will, I will, take, I will stop mentioning it. But Twittoons... Dot yes, com T W I T T O O N S dot com and they're all great. They're all very funny and uh, sadly you. very topical. Thank you for Mr. Being Manu. Here. Sadly, Mr. Sadly. Manu, say say it with me. Buy my book. <laughs> <laughs> Buy my book. There you, you go. Just it. say that. You can't do it. <laughs> Visit you can say that. Sites for free. <laughs> Visit website for free. He's open source man. That's he's the open source guy. Get the comic that uh, made Elon fire him. How about that? How about that, huh? <laughs> you break it, you buy it, Elon. That's smash, awesome. smash, smash. Thank you, Manu. Thank you, Stacy Higginbotham. So great to see you. Uh, Stacy is at stacyoniot.com. Uh, her podcast with Kevin Tofel is the IoT podcast. You can get that there. Uh, please come back and join us next week. Please. Please, Jeff. Oh, are you telling me? I'll be here. Yes, Jeff Jarvis. Or I'll will be, be there. Here. So will Aunt Pruitt. Twit.tv slash HOP for hands on photography. What you got coming up on hands on photography this week? Uh, this week, I got my hands on the Canon R7. Ooh. I, I had a had a brief amount of time to play with it. So I, I, I did my very best with getting some images and video, and I'll share my thoughts. I can't wait. Good. We'll watch that. That's a very interesting uh, camera. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We do This Week in Google Wednesday afternoon, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2200 UTC. You can join us uh, live if you want at live.twit.tv. Chat with us live at irc.twit.tv or in the Club Twit Discord, which is uh, always a lot of fun. Come on by for that. Uh, after the fact, on-demand versions at twitter.com slash twitter.com. See, I did it. I did it. I knew it. We got him. I did it. <laughs> Twit.tv. Twit We're not on Twitter. Actually, somebody is, but I'm not on Twitter.com. Twit.tv slash twig. Uh, there's a YouTube channel dedicated to This Week in Google. And, of course, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast player. That's the open way to do it. Nobody can stop you if you use RSS. Any way you do it, I hope you will listen to our show every week. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next time on This Week in Google. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Hey, folks, I'm Aunt Pruitt. I have a question for you. How do you think your hardworking team, with the Club Twit corporate subscription plan, of course, show your appreciation and reward your tech team with a subscription to Club Twit? Keep everyone informed and entertained with podcasts covering the latest in tech. With the Club Twit subscription, they get access to all of our podcasts ad-free, and they also get access to our members only discord uh, access to exclusive outtakes and behind the scenes footage and special content like the fireside chats that I enjoy hosting. Plus, they also get shows like hands on Mac, hands on windows and the untitled Linux show. So go to twit.tv slash club twit and look for corporate plans for complete details.